Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode 47 of the Horseman Podcast. And as always, Levi's here, along with right above me, Arthur. Hello! And for once, his camera actually survived the intro. Thankfully! Thankfully! New year? If my camera survives, I'm gonna get my CDs. Alright, there you go. New camera? Maybe? Uh, then next to him up there, Ricky. Yellow. Who, by the way, for those who watch the Shadow Call podcast every Saturday night, he will be on the, on the next episode of that when we talk Royal Rumble 2004. But that's Saturday. It, today's Wednesday. And then mm -hmm. right next to me, the always lovely Hannah. Bonjour. <laughs> <laughs> you, oh, know, you, know, you know, I want to suggest this, Levi. I know we're on live, but next time, try to say it in German, the intro, and then in Spanish, and then in Portuguese. <laughs> you're really going to make... You, you really want my brain... You really want my brain to explode, don't you? If if anyone out there the chat wants to hear Levi speak in Spanish, German, and Portuguese... Yeah, yeah, hell yeah! <laughs> I mean, we can teach you. I mean, we know. Mm. My brain, every morning when, when I, I wake yeah. up out of bed, my brain feels like it wants to break in half. <laughs> anyway. Funny enough, every I don't know why, every morning I get up out of bed and I have a bad headache. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. So I had to actually uh, take a couple of pills this morning to kind of help, and thankfully they're starting to kick in. But Blue pills! Oh. No, 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 not those kind of pills. Bad habit. Bad habit. <laughs> oh god! This, oh man, I, I'm having flashback with the Ramstein thing again. Hmm. Bad Hannah. I'm sorry, <laughs> but we love you, anyways. <laughs> uh, oh, on, I don't you, need you I don't need blue up. pills to make my dick bigger. A lady thinks my dick is just fine, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> anyway anyways um don't worry about it getting demonetized because i don't monetize anything anymore so we're fine mm -hmm. anyways uh see in the comments joey how's it going i'd like to see levi attempt to speak a foreign language of course you would oh boy you guys really are gonna make me do this We'll save it I mean, for the I, next episode, considering... Exactly. We'll I save that for the next episode, considering next episode we're going to be talking about the top ten worst metal albums ever, and I could just get pissed off any time I want. Diabolos. <laughs> Diabolos. Oh, boy. Here we go. Don't spoil it. <laughs> Don't spoil it. I mean, they kind of know I was inside the one kind of yeah, started the whole It's movie. not number one. <laughs> it ain't... I will say, spoiler alert, it's not my number one worst album. Oh, we know so, what it is, trust we, me. Everybody knows what it is, but we'll save that for next time. Instead, we're going to talk about a good topic, yet arguably one of the top three most difficult episodes ever. We are talking albums from the 1990s. So, a good way to begin is to talk about where was metal Stack. throughout the 90s. <laughs> To talk about where metal was throughout the 90s. Well, in the very beginning, like 90, 91... Hair metal was still fairly popular at the time. Thrash reached its peak. With but it the, was dying off. It was dying off, but it was mm -hmm. still very popular. Thrash was at arguably its peak in terms of popularity and commercial success with the Clash of the Titans tour here in the States with Slayer, Megadeth, Anthrax, Testament, and Suicidal Tendencies. With Allison and a little and a little known band, unknown band. Known as Alice in Chains. Yes, mm -hmm. which the story with that, for those who have never heard this story, it's from the Get Thrashed documentary, one of the best documentaries in metal history. They talk about that tour and how Death Angel was supposed to have opened the tour, but then they had a near-fatal bus accident and they couldn't do the tour, so they got Alice in Chains to come along and... And Alice in Chains, they were not liked at the time. And this was before they became popular as well. And this was shortly after Facelift came out, but it wasn't really out there yet. 
and people that were thrash kids did not like Alice in Chains and threw piss bottles at them. But hey, Lane Staley showing how metal he is, threw it back and beat the fuck out of the guy who threw piss at them. So mm-hmm. kudos to Lane for doing that. And then after that, once the album reached a success, then everybody that threw piss at them liked them. So there you go. But yeah, and that was the transition. That was ironically the peak and the guillotine for thrash at the time here in stateside. Cause then grunge became the flavor of the time with Nirvana, Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, Alice in Chains, even though Soundgarden and Alice in Chains were metal bands that just happened to come mm-hmm. out during that era. And actually this will make, uh, this will be interesting for you guys here. My buddy Joey in the YouTube chat said his mom went to school with Lane Staley. Because he's from Seattle, Ooh. so so mm. maybe she knew. Maybe she knew Kurt too. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually, he told me stories about like his mom working with Nirvana during some shows and how super nice Kurt and Dave and Chris was to her and stuff. So, Ooh. fun story there. But that, but then, but uh, that was America. No, we can't. Well, hang on, well, hang on. I'm, I wasn't quite done uh, with. I wasn't <laughs> quite done. I just kind of got sidetracked. But uh, while grunge was going here in the States, there was a couple of bands that helped keep the true metal alive during the first half of the 90s Metallica with the success of the Black Album and Pantera with the success of their first three albums of the decade. And it's so weird. Like, Cowboys from Hell is a phenomenal album to kickstart the decade to me. Yet they got heavier and heavier as they went along. They were not one to go the mainstream route. And yet Far Beyond Driven, which is arguably their heaviest album, went to number one on Billboard, which is really mm-hmm. saying something about what Pantera was doing. State side to kind of keep metal in the popular conversation. And yeah, like the underground scene was still going, but that brings us to what was going on in Europe and other mm-hmm. elsewhere and with Europe, metal. And in Europe, and in you Europe, had you Europe. had so many different uh, extreme metal scenes forming up and about. I was I was going I was going to say if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> yeah. So in yeah. so in Europe in the first half of the decade, the two arguably the two biggest extreme metal scenes in the first half of the decade, Swedish death metal and of course Norwegian black metal. Norwegian black metal. But there was also a scene that was starting to rise in Europe, especially out of Germany. The rise of what would later become power metal. Yes. Especially Mm -hmm. with bands, especially with bands such as Halloween starting out, especially with bands like Halloween uh, coming out. Then it it, it came all across. Gamma Ray, Blind Guardian especially. Gamma Ray would, would be lighter. But then came all these other bands from all corners of Europe. Hammerfall, Rhapsody of Fire, Falconeer. This was the emergence of power metal in a way. While grunge was all about being sad, talk about feelings, talking about the sad part. In Europe, we were telling stories. We were telling stories about glory to the brave. We were talking stories about Tolkien. We were telling stories that we had learned in history books, like medieval tales and and so others then we were mm-hmm. transforming them instead of bards into heavy metal but the, also mm-hmm. it was the it was as as levi said the rise of norwegian mm-hmm. black metal especially with bands that we know of like mayhem birds emperor gorgoroth immortal dark Throne. many others and swedish mm-hmm. exactly and swedish death metal in general i mean <clears throat> At the gates, the beginning of uh, the beginning of In Flames, Arch Enemy is starting to rise from the ashes of Carcass, which is on my list. Yeah. Dark um, Tranquility. But also, mm-hmm. but also exactly. in the Swedish scene, you also had before the Mellow Death scene, you had Entombed, Dismember, Unleashed, mm-hmm. Grave, Carnage, yeah. the Section, the Section that was also, and that, then that, also that, Swedish that. black metal was getting big too yeah. with Dark Funeral, Mark Azagal. Yeah. But let's not and forget as, as also, adults, also the mm-hmm. let's well. not forget also subgenres like industrial metal were becoming a bit bigger. 
Dev alternative Jim was metal. A Dev, early Dev Jim was becoming to be bigger. Gothic metal was huge. In well, the 90s. early early new metal. Yes, I was just yeah, about to say, and then arguably, and then arguably, the biggest subgenre of the decade was new metal, particularly in the end of the nineties. Whereas in the early stages, new metal mm -hmm. in the early days, like from ninety four till about ninety seven was good like the early corn mm -hmm. stuff was really good mm -hmm. uh deftones even though they're not new metal per se they were a band that just influenced the genre uh sepultura mm -hmm. roots was a new metal album that was cool um early slipknot that came out at the end of the decade was great mm -hmm. but yep. then on the opposite side of the new metal you had Limp Biscuit coming up at the end of the decade, and uh, but it, it wasn't the it wasn't it wasn't the worst thing that came out of the nineties. Trust me, that's true. Okay. And that uh, is true. Also, also, alternative metal was becoming bigger. Yeah, yeah. Faith a, No a More going strong in the beginning. Metal. Yeah, prog metal, metal was getting huge. Let's not forget Dream Theater, Fate's Warning going images, less. Images and Words is from ninety two. Yes. Cool. Tools get, getting in there, and then over in Europe, you had their own prog scene that was fusing it with Opeth, Opeth Edge of Sanity, Mashuga, so on and so forth. But of course, he also, one last thing how could I forget it? Also, here in America, probably the one scene that helped keep the underground alive here in the here stateside. Yeah, so the Florida death metal scene, you know, mm -hmm. death, deicide, obituary, morbid angel, all going strong, and then even up in New oh, York. And, and I absolutely and I absolutely forgot one, which was also very big in Europe, also throughout the nineties, the beginning of the Birmingham grindcore scene, especially with Napalm, Napalm Death, early Carcass, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, as well. So. And it was also the and it was also I think the year no a crossover is, is is earlier than that but while oh, Europe I almost was forgot. getting I actually while almost, Europe was getting oh. extremer while Europe was getting extremer especially mm -hmm. but then again so so was America industrial death metal yes there was there was it wasn't just the grunge that although the grunge became. The media darlings, the new in the first the new half of the decade, on the, on the yeah. radios, mm -hmm. as well. The underground still had a lot to thrive. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and people, and I need to address the big elephant in the room about the '90s and metal. So many mainstream people here, stateside, tried to say, "Thanks to grunge, metal is dead." No, metal did not die. If anything, it was just growing, and it went back to mm -hmm. the underground. Yeah, that's what happened. Because all the albums we're going to be it talking about here, it proved that metal was still alive mm -hmm. around the world in the 90s. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And, think of, fact, it, think, of it, and think of it this way. Metal, to a certain extent, was never meant to be, was never meant to be mainstream. Yes. To a certain mm -hmm. extent, it was never meant to be. If it became mainstream, great. Yeah. But for those that enjoy metal, whether it's me, you, everyone out there, they know that the real stuff, the grittier stuff, the rawer stuff, is the hidden the gems. Yeah. You can find some hidden gems. And also, fun fact, the majority of us were born in the 90s. Yes. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> I'm 88. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're close. You're close. You, you grew up in the 90s. Borderline. Right? I'm borderline. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're borderline. And then, uh, actually, I almost completely forgot. We were t I talked about with new metal another subgenre that was in its beginning stages, but wouldn't blow up until the two thousand. That's early metalcore. Back when metalcore mm. was metalcore, not the melodic style that was pioneered by Kill Switch. Which, not emo. Yeah, don't get which, me started. Don't don't get me started on late metalcore. Trust me. Yeah, later me era metalcore. No, 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 after. No, 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 no. Yeah, but Save that's two thousand. But that's two thousand. That's why I'm 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 saving it for the next. Episode. But yeah, when you look back at the early metalcore stuff in the nineties, was some great stuff like Hatebreed, Converge, Earth Crisis that had balls to it. Which people want to lambast metalcore as this like terrible subgenre that ruined my music. When you go to the where, where it all came from, it was actually very creative, cool stuff going on. But. That's beside the point. But now, 
let's get to the albums, but we're kicking things off with honorable mentions, and I shall start. Now, I'm going to mention quite a lot of albums that I didn't write down because it just would have been too much, but I'll quickly mention some. Uh, Morbid Angel, Blessed Are the Sick, Immolation, Dawn of Possession, um, let's see, uh, Jester Race by In Flames, um, there's just so many that I could go through, but the quick ones that I have, a uh, couple As albums, well. couple albums that I don't have yet in my collection, I'm going to mention, Bathory Hammerhearts, I mean, Bathory in the 90s was kind of an oddity compared to what they were in the 80s with their classic black metal sound where they went more traditional, doom, folk on Hammerheart and Twilight of the Gods and Blood on Ice. But then you had two albums in the middle of the 90s that were more groove that didn't quite work out, but that's uh, we'll probably save those for next episode. But I went with Hammerheart because it was the true change in the sound. Like, you heard hints of it, on Blood, Fire, Death in 88, but it fully became realized on Hammerheart, where it went, it was classic metal, it was folk metal, it was doom, all mashed together into one package, and the Viking imagery, no more black metal vocals, it's all clean vocals, and I, I absolutely love this album. And then the second album that I don't have that I wanted to put on here... Now, while thrash, mainstream-wise, kind of stagnated, there were still plenty of underground thrash bands that were keeping it going. And the best one in the 90s, or actually two of them from the 90s, one in the beginning, one in the end, the one in the beginning, Demolition Hammer out of New York. The mm. album, Epidemic of Violence. This is like if you combine Sepultura with Creator and a little bit of Slayer. It's brutal, it's got like a blackened vocal approach with a death metal rhythm section it's like extreme metal blender black thrash death but it's a thrash album with black metal vocals and death metal rhythms and it's amazing and then the one at the end of the decade and an album i'm getting in the mail hopefully soon the haunted self-titled debut a lot of people want to put them as mellow death and i'm like they are not close to Mellow Death. They are a thrash band. And this album was proof. The two Bueller brothers from At The Gates forming The Haunted. And this album was like the Swedish Slayer with like punky vocals. And I absolutely love this album. And I listened to it. And I'm getting the actual album soon. Now the rest I have on CD. So some people are going to be shocked this isn't in my top ten. But... You can't talk about best albums of the 90s without bringing up the be the highest seller of the decade, the Black Album. It's on my list. Honorable mentions. But yeah, the Black it's Album. On my list. What more can you say about this album that has been said already? Their highest seller. People want to shit on it because it's not a thrash album. It didn't have to be. It's a classic metal album. With a I heavy only, production, I only shit. I only shit on this on on the black album for one reason, which I I believe I already told. It's what got many people addicted to Metallica, and every time I hear someone saying that nothing else matters is their heaviest song <laughs> ever, I just want to slap the. the <laughs> I just want to slap. Them. No, no. <laughs> that thing is so fucking heavy. Nothing but, else matters. The real shit. But, I mean, I like Nothing Else Matters personally, but why I love this album, not just for the classic singles like Inner Sandman. Well. I, and I, mean, well. I, mean, I mean, if people think that Nothing Else Matters is the heaviest shit they've listened to, oh, then Behemoth's gonna tear you on you asshole. No, no, no. no. And, and we're not going towards Behemoth. If they say that nothing else matters is their heaviest song, listen to an Unforgiven. Listen to Master of Puppets. Listen to one. Yeah. Listen to one. For yes. whom the bell tolls. <laughs> but anyways. We'll talk later. But anyways, like I was saying, so why I love this album, not just for the classic singles that we all listen to so many times, Nothing Else Matters, Inner Sandman, The Unforgiven, but some underrated tracks that are on here are great. My friend of misery, <laughs> <laughs> friend of, misery <laughs> of Wolf and Man, the God that failed. 
Uh, Don't Tread on Me is a great track. Holier Than Thou, The Struggle Within, Through to Never. Really, every song that's not a, quote, single is amazing on this album. Even though the singles are great in their own right, but the other tracks need more attention from this album. And people say, this is not a heavy album. Fuck off, it is plenty heavy. And the best analog produ- production of all time. Which is ironic, Bob Rock, who did the production on that, did the best analog recording, but then 12 years later did the worst digital recording. (laughs) So, but I digress with that. I brought up this album earlier as an album that kind of started this band getting popular, and that's Cowboys from Hell, Pantera. Borderline thrash groove, but it's... it's It's on my honorable mentions, but it's not Cowboys. I think I know, yeah, mm-hmm. there you go. But anyways, I feel Cowboys is the best Pantera album because it was like the perfect bridging gap between the thrash sound and what they would eventually become. I mean, when you hear the opening title track, oh my god, it's like, it's almost like, and I was watching an episode of that metal show where they had King Diamond and Mark Tremonti from Alter Bridge and Creed together. And they debated on which Pantera album was better, and King Diamond and Don Jameson were like Cowboys from Hell. And I agree, when you hear the opening riff to Cowboys from Hell, it's like hearing Metallica kill them all for the first time. It's like it don't came forget, out of nowhere. Don't, don't forget that Dimebag Daryl did, uh, did the solo and some riffs on King Diamond's Voodoo album later on in the decade. Yep. <laughs> but other songs on here, apart from the title track, which is, in my opinion, the best Pantera song, you also have great other tracks like Psycho Holiday. Of course, Cemetery Gates, one of the best mm-hmm. ballad songs of all time. The Sleep is an underrated gem. The Art of Shredding, a brutal closer. And there's plenty of thrash, like Domination with arguably the best breakdown in metal history. That dun 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 Dun, dun, dun. That's a fucking awesome part. But that's that. Next album. I went through a phase in high school where I would listen to nothing but this album. And that's Harmony Corruption by Napalm mm. Death. When they went to more sound and they became a death metal band. Not the. There's still plenty of grind on here. Don't get me wrong. But it's more death metal. And you want to talk about a change night and day from this going back to from enslavement the previous album it's like night and day where from enslavement 30 songs in under a half hour this is 11 songs 40 minutes they were definitely expanding their horizons incorporating so many elements some thrash and of course death metal being the big thing and the last album with one of the best drummers in metal mick harris and the first with barney jesse from terrorizer and mitch harris from righteous pigs Holy shit! One of the best with still extreme one, with metal still albums. One of the, with still one of the squeakiest voices you'll ever hear. Well, when he speaks, it doesn't sound like that. But when you hear him do vocals, especially in later Napalm Death, with that squeal. And and fun fact, actually, real quick before we move on, Mitch Harris actually did vocals for the first Goat Lord album, which is like Black into Death Doom, and it's more mm-hmm. deep deep vocals so kind of interesting but napalm death harmony corruption amazing now this next one some people are going to be shocked this isn't in the top 10 but there are a couple of blackened albums i think that were better dim mysterious dom satanas by mayhem oh it's what uh my number Uh... three Ah! (laughs) number two And Hannah's and just Hannah? like, okay. Oh, Hannah. <laughs> Hannah's going to... Four. <laughs> At least it wasn't number one, otherwise that would have been funny. But, but of course, <laughs> we've talked about this album so many times in previous episodes, I feel like I don't even need to keep going. And then next up, I got Dark Throne, A Blaze in the Northern Sky. <laughs> Uh-oh. It's a thumb at number two. Ah! <laughs> Well, with process of elimination, you can guess my other number two, which we'll go on later. Yep. 
<laughs> Alright, but anyways, but yeah, Blaze in the Northern Sky, in my opinion, the best in the black metal era of Dark Throne, personally. The first one where they went, because you go, you rewind a year before this, they released Soul Side Journey, which was a underrated death metal album. Mm -hmm. uh, but then they put out and this the, album. And, and they, and they in the middle, they did the Goat Lord uh, recordings. Which, which and, when you listen to Goat Lord, even without the black metal vocals, it kind of sounded like they were going for an autopsy feel. But, yeah, Blaze in the Northern Sky, the first and, in the black metal era, and to me, a perfect Norwegian black metal album. And fun fact, no Blaze in the Northern Sky was the first full-length Norwegian black metal album. Yes. Full length. If you want to check out what the first norwegian black metal release death crush death crush yes but as far as Absolutely. a full length but as far as a full length this is what began everything i don't know if i don't know if full moon mysticism that can, came out can be that came out a little bit after it was same year 92 yeah. but it was okay. a little bit after i think this same thing with, this same was thing with uh, yeah this was january 92 because they recorded it in like two uh, months in 91. So. And Burzum, I think, came out in March of the same year. So, almost there. It was close, but regardless. Mm -hmm. Next up. But no cigar. <laughs> yeah. But next up, Dream Theater, Images and Words. Mm. My honorable, It's on my honorable mentions. I mean, you start off with the band's arguably most famous song, Pull Me Under, but th then there are some underrated tracks like Metropolis Part 1, Under Glass Moon, Take the Time, Another Day, Learning to Live, and the first album with James Labrie on vocals. What a way to start things off for Labrie and the band. Continuing with the prog theme, that brings up Tool Anima. Mm, I forgot about an anima. But yeah, Anima, not the best tool album in my opinion. That honor I feel goes to Lateralis, but Anima is a very close second. Uh songs, I mean when you got tracks like uh Stink Fist, um Gizm. the title track, and Hooker with a penis that kinda has that like hardcore thrash ending to it. Third eye you eulogy h very dark oriented prog metal kind of like the opposite of dream theater where dream theater kind of mm -hmm. had that more storytelling positivity style yeah tool did and, it in like mm -hmm. um and tool did it in like a more grungy dark intense fashion just a just a bit of a question and it, i might be mistaken isn't also nine inch nails the downward spiral from the 90s yes 94 yes and what's funny, we got a few people from Twitch chiming in. A uh, buddy of mine and DK's and Ola England, Bubble Point, uh, says, But Metallum told me Tool isn't metal. <laughs> Metallum needs to get their act together. Oh, God. But anyway. There we go. But anyway, so then the next two are like perfect companions to one another because one started it, the other perf almost kind of perfected it. Carcass Hardwork. Next up. Mm -hmm. The album that basically created what we know as melodic death metal. I need to get it at some point my in my ten. collection. One of my number tens. Yes. But yeah, Hard Work, it's a perfect Carcass album. Not the best. To me, Surgical Steel is their best. And maybe when Torn Arteries comes out this year, it will be the new best. We'll see. But yeah, Carcass Hardwork. And then the perfect companion to it. At the gate, slaughter of the soul. It's on, my, it's on my honorable mentions. It's on my list. It's on my list. But yeah, I mean, when it comes to the underground in the 90s, you can't ignore something like this. I mean, definitely melodic death metal, but with a lot of influence of German and American thrash, particularly Slayer and Creator kind of melding it in with their Swedish death metal sound. And I love the guitar tone on here. The combination of the Boss HM2 pedal and the Boss Metal Zone pedal to create the guitar sound, which is beautiful on this album. So, there you go with Slaughter. Final two. Next up, Artur might have this on his list. I'll be shocked if it's not at least an honorable mention. Nile Ooh. amongst the catacombs of Nefren Ka. Ugh! I forgot about the catacombs. 
But yeah, Nile began late 90s with uh, not quite as technical as they would become, eventually starting with Black Seeds of Vengeance a couple years after. But yeah, this is more of their brutal death metal era where it was just so low and so vicious and shorter songs with not as much technique than what you would hear on albums later on. But tracks like Serpent Headed Mask, Ramses Bringer of War, Stones of Sorrow, Opening of the Mouth, just yep. brutal classics. And all hail Carl Sanders. And then finally. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, my last honorable mention. I know I've been going on for a bit, but hey, what can you do? It's what we do on this show. Mm hmm. And, of course, this band going to have a new release this year. Still, if I could put it in the top ten, I would. Broken Hope, Swamped and Gore. I mean, Broken Hope, more people need to listen to this band. In my opinion, mm -hmm. the most underrated death metal band of all time. Because they are. Because they did so much for death metal during the 90s. When, when death metal was beginning to stagnate in the mid-90s, Broken Hope was one of the bands that kept it fresh by incorporating different elements of groove. Yo, of ball thrower, someone's challenging you. <laughs> but both are at least still get more credit, whereas Broken Hope doesn't get nearly enough. So Not enough credit. I would say that Broken Hope and Ball Thrower are, are kind on, of similar... Are on par, because they are similar in terms of groove. But Broken Hope no, definitely but I had... Mean, in, terms of, in terms of recognition... They don't get as much recognition. Yeah. And actually, mm -hmm. now that you brought up Bull Thrower, I completely forgot. There you go. So if I'm going to put a Bull Thrower album in the honorable mentions, I'm going to go with the Fourth Crusade. Mm -hmm. I'll go with four, vic four Victory. But, yeah, Swamped and Gore, early brutal death metal. It's kind of like in, in that middle ground of brutal death metal and classic death metal because... This is like what would happen if obituaries vocals were lower rather than higher, mixing in with like the breakdowns of like a cannibal corpse or suffocation at the time with the grind influence of bands like Napalm and Terrorizer. You combine them into a melting pot, you get Broken Hope. And they're putting out something new this year. EP, full length, I don't I know. Don't. But it's, well, it's only been four years. It's not been that long. But, oh, okay. but yeah, I look forward to seeing what they got coming out soon. But that's all the honorable mentions on my part. Let's get through the second longest real quick. Ricky, you go next. I have seven honorable mentions. Okay. Yes, I had 25 at first, but I was like, no, I need to cut it off. It was a lot. Because it's the 90s. Everything that we know right now happened because of the 90s. So, oh, here we go with the first one. And uh, I know Hannah's going to have it because I know she loves her industrial. Psalm 69 by Ministry. Ooh! <laughs> Number three! <laughs> Arguably one of the best industrial metal albums out there next to probably... Street Cleaner from Godflesh. The manufacturer. Uh, the manufacturer. The manufacturer. Oh, oh, well, yeah, but like I said. And me. any Rammstein album in that period, too. Well, yeah. Next up. They had... actually they actually released Sinsucht and Erzelite in the, in the mm -hmm. 90s. Yep. 95 yeah. and 97. Yeah. Next up, Pantera's Cowboys from Hell. Yes, I'm the Texan. It was obviously I was gonna have Pantera on my list, <laughs> even though it, even though this album gets a lot of credit for re re revising heavy metal. It was for Pantera. Heavy metal came back. It, heavy metal never left. Walk, it just get, went on walk the gets more, walk gets even more credit. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. Next up, a bit of an odd oddity here. Meatloaf. Well, back to hell, Ooh. back to hell too. Bad out of hell. Too. Bad out of hell. If you're talking about comebacks, this is one of the best comebacks out there. From it took them almost 20 years to make part two, which originally was gonna gonna come out back in 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 1980, but after the success of Bad Out of Hell one, Meatloaf and Jib kind of separate ways. Meatloaf began touring, but the album was never hit as big as. Back into hell, it wasn't until 91 or 86 that they reunited, and it took them until 93 to release this comeback of an album. Wasn't that, wasn't that Ringer, Dead Ringer for Love still with Jim? 
Um, yeah. no, he left. Uh, wait, was it? I, I think he was. I'm not sure. Dead Ringer, but I think I Jim, Jim was on there and then he left. Yeah. Or but no, like, no, no, like no. Said, no, wait, I, now I remember. No, Jim wasn't on Dead Ringer. No, he now, wasn't on okay, Dead Ringer. I, I got it now. Yeah. I was thinking back got, to the Behind the Music documentary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, I mean, you got, the, of course, the singles. I was, I did anything for love, <laughs> rock and roll, dreams come true. But if you look, you listen to this whole album, you got some great underrated songs. Objects in the rear mirror made it purer than you think. Good girls go to heaven, bad girls go everywhere. Um, back into hell, lost boys and golden girls. I mean, there's some great songs in this album that no wonder it became Midlow's second. I know it was their biggest sell next to Back into Hell One. Next up, Guns N' Roses, Use Your Illusion One and Two. Forgot about yes. those. I have them yes. both in my honorable mentions. Yes, I know. Axe Rose gets gets a lot of shit, but this was during the time that Guns N' Roses were at their peak. I mean, that, that tour with Metallica, the legendary tour, which uh, for, of course, you know We're what most happened in known Montreal. For what happened, yeah, in Montreal, yeah. With, uh, Montreal. What in Montreal. <laughs> but those two albums are some of the best songs of Guns N' Roses' entire discography. <clears throat> November Rain, Civil War. The re the re recording of um Bob Dylan's um knocking, knocking on, on heaven's, heaven's door. door you could be mine I mean, wasted wasted times you got so many great guns and roses don't cry on those don't cry both versions the original and the al- the alternative version um next up the black album of course mm-hmm. again un- overrated but yet influential just not. Say people, this is the heaviest Metallica I've ever heard in my life. Which I'm like, are you fucking serious? Go listen to Kill 'Em All. Go listen to Ride the Lightning. Go listen to Master of Puppets. And then Justice for All. Exactly, and Justice for All. <laughs> Next up, it's Bastery. Now this was hard, hard because there were so many good Bastery albums. But I went with probably my favorite of the '90s, Blood on Ice. Hmm. My very first Bastery album. After Oscar the Grouch did an appearance of both Rickyum and Octagon, <laughs> Quarson began to go back into his old catalog and realized that he never finished Blood on Ice, which originally yeah. was supposed to come out between Bloodfire Death and, and Hammer, Hammer Art, Art yep. as a double album with the other album called Requiem, not too confused with the monstrosity that we got later in the decade. In 94, I think. 90. 94, yeah, but still, Blood and Ice, so good, and to this day, Quarson says, I was never inspired by power metal. Oh, you were inspired by power, but you are inspired by Blind Guardian and Man of War doing the 90s. Don't deny Quarson. I love you, bud, but come on. You I remember so a quote. I remember a quote from Razor Fist saying that this was a darker version. Blood and Ice was a darker version of Blind Guardian. Mm-hmm. And it is. I mean, the Stalin is probably my favorite song from the entire album. It's so blood. Oh, and the lake. The lake. Oh, yeah. so the lake. I mean, I mean, you sure it's a shame that we never got the other half of a requiem. I mean, I'm just imagining what would have been. I mean, it would have been an epic album during the late '80s, early '90s. Mm-hmm. And last but not least, which is gonna be a shocker, how the honorable mentions. ACDC's The Razor's Edge. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now, this is not really a comeback because Blow Up Your Video came out in 88. But during the late 80s, ACC, ACDC's albums were top hitters, but they never got the same success as they did with Back in Black and For Those About to Rock. Yep. They never struggled. They, of course, went on tour all over the world. But it wasn't until the 90s when they released... Thunderstruck that a lot of new ACDC fans got to listen to. And this album just went up in the charts to the point that they went to Russia and recorded one of the most infamous Russian albums on live, ACDC Live, back in 1992, which was the same venue that had Pantera, Metallica, and I forget the other band during the Russian tour in the late 90s. But anyways, I mean, you got songs like Money Talks, Thunderstruck, Are You Ready? 
Got your ball, shut them off. They even have a Christmas song, <laughs> Mistress for Christmas, which I play every single year on Christmas because it's an AC song about Christmas. <laughs> Talking about same, same thing as I same same thing as I play every Christmas. Santa Claus is coming to town by Alice Cooper. <laughs> yeah, I, I I mean, come on, I mean, yeah, some I know ACDC is AC is a fun band. I mean, they could write silly lyrics. Just a fun, great time to listen to ACDC, especially with new album came out last year. Perfect, and that's it. Those are my honorable mentions. Arthur, I do have ten, eleven if we count with uh, with uh, the Catacombs of Necron Ra, but. This one is a bit of a shock that nobody has talked about. Bloody Kisses by Typo Negative. I forgot it's about that. List. I forgot it's about Bloody list. Kisses. It's in my list. <laughs> that came came out in 93. And, I mean, Black Number One. I mean, Christian Woman, Black Number One. The cover of Summer that Breeze. This, mm -hmm. Exactly. One of the best covers you of could all say time. That, you could say that if... Typo Negative wasn't gothic metal. It was a bit doom. They became mm -hmm. with Bloody Kisses. I do have Images and Words as well by Dream Theater. Came out in 92. Levi, I'm shocked. If you don't have this one either on your list. Or if you don't have to the to the honorable mentions. 1999's Still Life by Opus. It's on my list. The transit. It's on okay. my list. <laughs> the transition period from... Death Metal Opeth to Prog Metal Opeth. The Moor, Benighted, Face of Melinda, Serenity Painted Death, no need to say anything else. While most of you have uh, Cowboys from Hell on your list, I have Vulgar. Vulgar Display mm -hmm. of Power. And despite what I would say about Pantera, yes, they can be a bit overrated. Yes, their fans are getting in, are getting unbearable, always asking about Pantera reunions. Which is now will it's never not happen. It's not gonna happen. Exactly. <clears throat> but at least they left us with a great discography and vulgar. Yes. Is to me a smidge better than Cowboys. I have also the two Use Your Illusion albums that both came out in 91. Ricky a bit mentioned this on his honorable mentions. Or, uh, no, it was, it was Levi. Slaughter of the Soul by At The Gates that came out in 95. And also... Last but not least, probably the only grunge that I that I will put here on my list, grunge slash metal, 1992's Dirt by Alice in Chains. Oh, it's on my list, though. Andrew just killed Levi. Four. <laughs> really? Hey. Really? Hey, some of, you, four? some of you already mentioned my number five and my number three, but I'm guessing that Hannah will mention my number one. Levi, really? Number four? I thought I was going to be your number one. I was betting it was going to be your number one. I would, I would say that. I would say I, as much as I like dirt and I like dirt a lot, I can, I can uh, accept. I can, uh, I can uh, acknowledge the opinion that facelift might be, might be better. But then again, that's just me. So mm -hmm. my honorable mentions. All right, Hannah. Well. I also have 10 honorable mentions. Uh, first of all, I have uh, Roots by Sepultura. Oh, uh, roots. Bloody Roots. I mean, I have seen them live a few times playing this thing in its entirety, and I, 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 it's just, besides uh, Beneath the Remains, my favorite Sepultura album. And I love how they embrace their Bra Brazilian tribal roots and so on. I mean, it's... It, it's just a very energetic album and um, captivating. Um, next, and groove oriented. Was... Yes, yeah. um, and I I really like that it, it works. It works well, really well in a live setting, especially if the Cavalera brothers get together. Um, uh, everything after uh, Max uh, left, I don't really care about. Mm. Um, yeah, I, as... I was the same way until Quadra came out last year. I thought Quadra was a really good album. Maybe they, maybe the Derek era is finally going to be worth it after all. But well, I, we'll I, I don't know. I've, I've we'll seen, see. I've we'll seen see. both. I've seen uh, the Cavalera Brothers live, and I've seen. Uh... Mm. Oh. Uh, 
Oh, oh, oh shot technical down difficulties. The <laughs> show wouldn't be Bainical what it is without it. And now Hannah's back. All right, you were saying. There you go. You're back. You were saying. What? What I've seen uh, the Cavalera brothers, and I've seen Sabatura with Derek Green, and I simply it's not prefer comparison. Yeah. Brothers. Um, well, next one, I also have Images and Words by Dream Theater, um, prefer that one over, um, Metropolis 2. Um, that was the other one I was debating on, was Metropolis, oh, or no, Awake I mean, would have yeah. been the other one I would have went with. I, mean, for I would me, go with Metropolis. I mean, for, for me, both Metropolis and Images and Words are groundbreaking albums and very listenable. I... I personally prefer Images and Words slightly over Metropolis, especially because of Pull Me Under. I think I, I love that song. Yeah. And I really like I really like that album. But then again, Dream Theater. I mean, I enjoy them at times, but they're the amongst my favorites. Yeah. So only yes. on the honorable mentions yeah. list. Then next to the biggest band of the decade, Metallica. I don't have the Black Album on here. I actually have S and M here. Ooh. Um, that is a great live true. album. I mean, I mean, I like I like the Black Album. Uh, some songs on there, especially the Unforgiven and My Friend of Misery and Enter Sandman and so on. But a lot of it is overplayed. And um, I mean, and S and M on the other hand is still fresh to me. I really like how they incorporated uh, classical music in um, in this album. I love the opening with all those homages the to any any more yeah. corner, um, and and the start with the call of Cthulhu. Cthulhu is just epic. Yes. Um, and actually, uh, day, I actually almost forgot to mention with S and M, my favorite song that they did from a studio album on there was their version of Devil's Dance on s and I love how mm -hmm. they incorporated the, the uh, symphonic elements to make it sound like it's a Western standoff. <laughs> I really, really like yeah. that. Yeah. But continue. I mean, but for, for me, uh, s and has one of the best live concert openings ever. Um, I almost I just, forgot. I, just... I almost forgot. And also, fun fact with s and two songs on there minus human and no leaf clover two original songs that were never put on studio albums but no mm -hmm. leaf clover that was, was the superior great. of the two and that no, the, don't need no leaf clover no. as it stands it's yes, perfect it's, as it is perfect mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and I, I just love the opening with the ecstasy of gold but yeah well <laughs> Again, uh, S and M by Metallica. Uh, next, I have Pantera, but I don't really have an album. Pantera. I mean, I've enjoyed single songs out of their disco discography, but never entire albums. Um, I mean, songs out of Carbus of Hell, Far Beyond Driven, and Vulgar Display of Power. They're all amazing songs on there, but uh, th there isn't really a an album that comes to mind, at least for me. So, Metalli uh, Pantera is great. Uh, but I can't name an album. Uh, then next, I uh, Carcass with uh, Hard Work. Um, one of the Number most <laughs> one of the most important albums uh, to kickstart the whole Mellow Death movement. Um, I I am a more more a fan of their melodic death metal work than uh, the grind uh, grind stuff the they uh, released era. earlier. Yep. Um, it's 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 just thing of personal taste that and well i like i like hard work yeah. um next <laughs> next i have amorphous tears uh from the thousand lakes oh, forgot about oh. that one i forgot the lakes i forgot yeah tales of a thousand lakes and Carillion isthmus i forgot about yeah, those two both, albums both great albums i mean with the the with tales um, it's still it's still heavy. It's doomy. There's proc on here, but then again, there are these beautiful melodies uh, on there as well. Black that, Winter uh, Amorphous... Day, amazing song. <coughs> that uh, Amorphous would later be known for, and I mean, I I love the work with Tommy uh, Tommy now on um, vocals, but yeah. uh, from the early albums, Tales uh, without doubt is my favorite album. Um, next, I have uh, the self-titled um, album of Rage Against the Machine. Forgot about that one, too. I forgot. I mean, when it comes to a mainstream and metal, this, uh, without doubt, is one of the most well-known metal albums out of the 90s. 
especially with uh, Killing in the Name, um, which is a fucking great song. Um, I'm the thing is, I the mean, only my, my... the only reason I don't have any Rage Against the Machine on it, it's because I'm over it. It's it has been overplayed a thousand times that I'm done. But yeah, that, I respect thing. I respect I mean, all when... of them for, for what they are. Mm-hmm. But don't say that you're against the machine because now you are the machine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I really like them. And the thing is, um, I mean, when we uh, drive to concerts, uh, I, when or when I drive to concert with uh, with my friend uh, Stefan, um, he has that thing in his car and it's constantly playing. I like to listen to it once in a while, but then again, it has as I just said, it has been overplayed, uh, much like the Black Album. And that's one of the things, I mean, I can listen to Killing in the Name every time, but the entire album, it, it's a bit too much. Yeah. Um, next, I I mean, I have to mention this band every episode, Agalog with Pale Folklore. Um, <laughs> I mean, it, 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 that was is... 90... Yet, it, that was 98, correct? Six, six. Six. Ninety-six. Yeah, I mean, um, it isn't the mantle and it isn't ashes against the grain, but it it was an ocean that uh, great things were still to come, and there are amazing songs on here like uh, when she p- painted fire across the skyline and uh, hallways of enchanted ebony and uh, the melancholy spirit and there the entire album is great. It just isn't on the same level yet as. Uh, later albums, but it's still a fantastic uh, black metal record with uh, doom and folk elements uh, and the stuff they would later be known for. I I, I like this album. Uh, if if it hadn't been for the white, this would be uh, also a part of the Holy Agalog tr- uh, Trinity. But then there is the white, and it's better than Pay for Chlor. Uh, but still, Pay for Chlor is an am- amazing album. Um, next, uh, or second to last, I have, um, Agato Daimon with Higher Art of Rebellion. Um, I, I love this album. It's, um, my favorite album of this, uh, German black gothic dark metal outfit. And it's, it's very symphonic at times, co- uh, contains opera- operatic singing mixed with the uh, typical black metal vocals. It's, it has a very gothic feeling to it, almost like a darker version of uh, Tribulation. Um, and there are fucking amazing songs on here like Tongue of uh, Thorns and uh, Body of Clay. I, I love this album. Uh, got Got it from my cousin a few years ago and I really like it. And then the last honorable mention. Sorry, Arthur. Uh, Blind Guardian, Nightfall in Middle Earth. Ah. <laughs> no, I no, you, she didn't kill me. You mean this Nightfall in Middle Earth? Yes, exactly that one. My number two. Mm. Ooh, number two. I mean, if, if when it comes to German power metal of the 90s, there are two other albums that I'm going to talk about later, but I really wanted to mention and... Uh, Night, I'm uh, guessing Guardian one is a Gamma well. Ray album? Yeah. I just, realized, <laughs> I just realized, now that you brought up Blind Guardian, I completely forgot about Iced Earth. Burnt Offerings, honorable mentions. I completely Dark forgot. Dark Saga. And Dark Saga, too. Mm-hmm. I actually made a mistake. I only have one other German power metal album coming out later, but but who cares? I really wanted to talk about Blank Guardian, but I think Arthur is saying more about it, so I'm just yeah. shutting my <laughs> mouth. And, yeah. Missed by this much. <laughs> oh, and Bubble Point just said in the chat, isn't everyone forgetting about Iced Earth now? <laughs> it's uh, better to forget about it. Anyways. No, com- nope. no comment. No comment. No, po- no politics here. Yeah, we don't talk that bullshit here. Anyways. Yeah. Continue. My honorable mentions. That was Blind Guardian was my last. Oh, I but... thought you said you had one <laughs> no. more, but oh well. <laughs> okay. Now to the nitty gritty, the top ten. Um. Let's go with Raphael's list. He said, no Oh, yeah, let's do Raphael's list first, which he kind of jumbled his list together because he was kind of in a hurry. He couldn't be here for but that he, episode he, yeah. because he was he, at he work. He did it right but, now. 
All right. I mean, he just sent it to me, so I'll, I'll say it. Number ten, Megadeth, Rust in Peace. Number, it's on my list. Number nine, well. Ozzy Osbourne, No More Tears, which I forgot. I forgot about that one, no too. I forgot about No number More Tears. Eight, yeah. Number eight, Fear of the Dark, which mm, it's an okay album. I, uh, I think it's That's good. a stretch. I think it's good. Slayer, Seasons of the Abyss, of course. My list. It's on my list. N- number six, Man of War, Louder Than Hell. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Bit of a stretch. Metallica Load. Hmm. <laughs> I love Load and Reload. I don't care what anyone says, but yeah. not up there. Ah, but that's it's but that's not... a bit of a stretch too. Yeah. Number four, Corn, the subtitle. Yes. Okay. Number three, which I forgot to put on my list, Slipknot subtitled. That's a great one. Number two, mm-hmm. Nirvana's Nevermind, which Okay. Course. And number one, Pantera, Cowboys from Hell. Okay. All right. Now on to the top ten. I got a lot of ties on my list because it was so brutal. But <clears throat> starting off at number ten, these are albums that, if I'm going to say that are uh, uh, companions to one another, this is the definition of two companion albums. No. Uh, no. No. Is it what I think it is? Is what I think it is? Well, anyways, one of them's a little more brutal than the other. One of them's a little darker than the other. These are two Death Doom albums that are, in my opinion, like brothers to one another. First, Autopsy Mental Funeral. Mm. In my opinion, the best autopsy album. With Severed Survival being a close second, but Mental Funeral, Mm -hmm. (coughs) this is where uh, the Doom influence really shines through. As Mm -hmm. Chris Ryford said in the liner notes, that they were all into Sabbath, Candlemas, St. Vitus, Trouble during this time. And they thought, wouldn't it be cool if we could take those, put it into our death metal, and create something that's dark atmospheric and evil out came this album. you heard yeah. hints of it on the retribution for the dead ep with the title track being like a direct lift of black sabbath by black sabbath but this album i mean songs like in the grip of winter torn from the womb slaughter mm-hmm. day a uh, hole in the head destined to fester even a thrashy closer with dark crusade it's just brutal evil death doom from Mm -hmm. one of the pioneers of not just death doom but death metal as a whole because remember Mm -hmm. autopsy formed after chris left death after scream bloody gore so and autopsy very influential band then the other one like i said the perfect like brother to autopsy and the band that would take what autopsy did but truly create death doom proper Asphyx, last one on Earth. Oh, damn! Mm-hmm. Don't have on my list. I'm shocked. I'll be honest, but yeah, but yeah, I last have... me too. I have me some death dude on my list, but not those. But yeah, in my opinion, the band that perfectly encapsulates Death Doom. It's Asphyx. To me, what I think makes Death Doom sixty percent death metal, forty percent doom. Asphyx hits that perfectly with some thrash thrown into the mix to kind of add different dynamics to it. And they just released Necroceros this past week, and it was a great album. But to me, Last One on Earth is their masterpiece. You start off with MS Bismarck, and of course, in my opinion, their best song, the title track. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Crusher is a great one. Streams of Ancient Wisdom, which I think has been recorded like four times in their career two on demos one on the embrace the death demo album and then here and of course other underrated tracks like asphyx forgotten war funny enough the version i have here also comes with the crush the cenotaph ep with the classic song crush the cenotaph but yeah of course martin Mm -hmm. van druden Arguably the, if not one of the top five best death metal vocalists of all time. Mm -hmm. So that's my number Mm -hmm. 10. My number nine 
It's a three-way, the first of two three-way ties. Now, all three of these albums, again, are companion because they are all fitting in the brutal death metal end of the death metal scale. First, it's an album that I should be getting in the mail today, funny enough, Cryptopsy None So Vile. Ooh. You want to talk about a onslaught of brutal technicality? None So Vile is like one of the albums. Lord Worm's vocals, arguably, along with Frank Mullen and Joe Fichek, the pinnacle of brutal death metal vocalists. And as a commenter said on the brutal death metal Lock Horns episode with DK and Cannibal Cam, Lord Worm sounds like a junkyard dog getting ready to eat you alive. Such an <laughs> amazing vocalist. And the music. So ahead of its time, well, te Tech Death was already going with another band I'll talk about in just a moment, as well as like Cynic, Atheist, Pestilence, but Cryptopsy took it to the most over the top, and also some of the best breakdowns, like in the song uh, Graves of the Fathers, one of the best breakdowns in metal history, but yeah, None So Vile. Next up... Another band you can't talk about 90s metal without Cannibal Corpse. And there were so many great Corpse. Cannibal Corpse albums Which one? in the 90s. But the one that I'm going with, in my opinion, their best, The Bleeding. What? Yep. Yeah, I kind of figured you were going to go with that one. But yeah, The Bleeding... I, th I thought he was going... I thought he was going either Butcher at Birth or Tomb of the Mutilated. Tomb of the Mutilated would be a close... Or actually, no. Tomb of the Mutilated would be third on Cannibal albums of the 90s. Actually, the other album that came close was Vile, the first with Corpse Grinder. Mm. But I went with The Bleeding, mm. not just because it was Barnes' last album, but as far as songwriting, they perfected their songwriting approach with great balance of brutality, catchiness, technicality, groove. I mean, you start off with one of their best songs, Staring Through the Eyes of the Dead, followed up with one of their most brutal songs fucked with a knife which by the way people who uh ban the people in germany that banned the first three albums you tell them they can't play hammer smashed face but they can play fucked with a knife give me a break <laughs> <laughs> but anyways uh, of course uh, one of their most popular songs stripped raped and strangled but some underrated gems come out of there like return to flesh this like slowed down groovy song with a great solo uh the title track force fed broken glass and experiment in homicide and then this version i got features a cover of possessed the exorcist mm -hmm. that they did on the hammer smashed ep mm -hmm. a year before but yeah the bleeding is an essential album and then the third one, I'm covering up because this is a double uh, case that I got. It's two albums in one, but I'm picking the one on the left. Another important band in Brutal Tech Death, Suffocation, Effigy of the Forgotten. Oh, oh my God. Oh. Like, holy shit, you want to talk about brutality? <laughs> Woo! Fucking amazing album, man sophisticated songwriting too like it's proggy not in the way you would think like it's not proggy in terms of like uh you know a bunch of sweeping solos and shit it was more in how the songs were constructed that feel proggy so they combined the song structures of prog with the breakdowns of the new york hardcore scene with the intensity of death metal and you got brutal tech death without this there would be no nile there would be no necrophagist. There would be no dying fetus. There would be no cryptopsy if not for suffocation. And also the song Liege of Inveracity, the slam, it created slam death metal, even though I'm not a big fan of slam death metal, but I can't deny the influence and it was a great breakdown. And also I have to give props, Frank Mullen, amazing vocalist and Mike Smith, an amazing drummer. But that was for my number nine, 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 nine. Nine. Now for my number eight, it's my next tie. Oh, wait. Well, one of them, I'm I'm gonna save the the one that I feel like I'm gonna kill Hannah with last. But anyways. Oh boy. Um, oh god. <laughs> but first off, I want to talk about uh, the section "Storm of the Lights Bane." 
Oh no! You forgot my number ten. Oh, you're number, number ten. ten. My number ten. No, I forgot. I but with Dissection, the both Bane. of their albums in the '90s, Somber Lane and Storm of the Lights Bane, are great. But I went with Storm because it's, in my opinion, the better of the two. Perfect mm-hmm. combination of black metal and melodic death metal because they were equally as inspired by black metal as they were by what their peers were doing, like At the Gates and In Flames, and wanted to mix the two. With a lot of thrash thrown into the mix, but I mean songs like Night's Blood, Unhallowed, Where Dead Angels Lie, a title track, Thorns of Crimson Death is such a beautiful song. And this version I got double disc, including covers of uh, Tormentor's Elizabeth Bathory and Slayer's Antichrist, which are great covers. Mm. Yep. Now... <laughs> Oh, boy. <laughs> Anna, you're gonna hate me. You are so oh, going to hate please me. Please don't be what I said. Number you know, eight, along with the section. Don't, don't be what I. <gasps> oh, it's <our> left. <laughs> oh, it's our left to go. <laughs> I hope his camera comes back. Otherwise, he just screwed himself. <laughs> Oh, uh, Ricky's number two also. <laughs> and Hannah's given me the number one. There we go. What the fuck just happened? <laughs> I thought you left because I revealed the album. <laughs> Look oh. what he has. <laughs> and Hannah's upset. I knew that was going to happen. What do you have? Oh, oh Levi. Fuck. <laughs> Levi, you're going to have your... My number one. Up. I got killed by a double. I got a double. No, 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 no. You only got one because I have two. Levi, Still, you both have it at number one. Anthems. Ooh, anthems. You're well, going to every... get yourself an invasion later on today. <laughs> on my uh, SmackDown vs. Raw 7 stream later today, yep. <laughs> uh, anyways. Oh. But it... I have these two on my number one. Oh man! But anyways, I had a feeling you were gonna go that way. But anyways, uh, <laughs> but anyways, uh, I'll let Hannah and everybody else explain further. But uh, of course, another album you can't put, can't not put on this list in the Nightside Eclipse, the pillar of symphonic black, perfect middle ground of symphonic black and the traditional Norwegian sound. I mean, I'll let everybody else say what they gotta say about it when we get to it. Anyways, now to my number seven. Number seven, mm-hmm. next up, the first solo album on the list. Not like solo artist, but like solo non-tie. Um, I'll be shocked if nobody else has this album on the list, but in my opinion, the album that not only created the scene, but never topped it. Left Hand Path by Entombed. <gasps> Not on my list. Oh, let them pass. I forgot. <laughs> and Hannah's number five. But yeah, Left Hand Path, the best Swedish death metal album of all time. And Artur oh. left again. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> anyway. You keep hitting the wrong button, Artur, whatever you're trying to do. <laughs> I don't know. I mean... <laughs> my- all the images of you are frozen, are freezing. Oh. Okay, try and turn on your camera again. Oh yeah, hopefully. I you don't didn't. know. I don't know because I don't. I don't know if it's gonna freeze again. Oh, don't. All right, there. It oh, is. there we go. There we go. Here I thought go. we. Yeah. I thought you cursed yourself, but anyways. We're good. We're but good. yeah, uh, but yeah, left hand path. I, I mean, I'm. I'm summoning. I'm summoning later. I'm summoning later. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, Left Hand Path, the best Swedish death metal album of all time, and one of the first, along with uh, Tiamat's first album and Dark Recollections by Carnage. But Left Hand Path, it just was so different from what was going on in death metal, especially stateside. It took the Boss HM2 sound, that buzzsaw guitar, LG Petrov's vocals, may he get well soon as he's dealing with bile duct cancer. Um... Amazing performance on the vocals. And I love that it's like this thrashy death metal, but also proto mellow death because there's plenty of melody on this album, especially the title track. And also the first death metal album to have any clean vocals on the song Bitter Loss. LG kind of goes a little bit clean on a couple parts. But mm-hmm. Left Hand Path, 
an all-time classic that I need to get at some point. Now for number six, my last three-way tie. These are the three, these are three thrash or thrash-oriented albums. Starting things off with the oriented one, because there is some thrash, but it's mostly a traditional metal album. Testament the Ritual. Ooh. Some people hate this album, and I don't get why. I really don't. This was heavier, in my opinion, than Souls of Black. And, yeah, it's more melodic, but it's darker. Like, this is the album I feel that kind of signaled what Testament would become, starting with Formation of Damnation, with the darker tone. I mean, songs like Electric Crown, which got a lot of MTV play at the time, but there are a lot... Like, this whole album's so underrated. Songs like So Many Lies, Let Go of My World, the title track, arguably their darkest song. Uh, as the season's gray, Return to Serenity is probably, along with Electric Crown, the only songs people really know of of this album because it's a ballad and it's arguably their best ballad track. I mean, top to bottom, it's an amazing album. And it's the last album with the classic lineup of Chuck, Alex, Eric, Greg, and Louie. After this, Alex and Louie left, and then they would get James Murphy and John Tempesta for Low, which, bubble point, I say you said you go with Low as the best Testament album of the 90s. Low's kind of, ironically, low on my list for Testament albums of the 90s. No <laughs> pun intended. But for me, pun intended. But for me, the ritual <laughs> needs to get more love. Next up, now these two are the true thrashers of the three. First, Sodom Tapping the Vein. Ooh. In my opinion, the most underrated album in Sodom's discography. It's like when people talk Sodom, they talk Persecution Mania, Agent Orange, even M16 gets more love than this album. This is an album more people that like Sodom or like German Thrash should pay attention to. It's borderline death metal at times because it's so fast. And Tom Angel Ripper's voice gets pretty low at times, kind of like Jeff Walker a little bit at times. But you still get the standard uh, Tom Angel Ripper voice on here. But songs like One Step Over the Line is such a gem. The Crippler. That song was so catchy as far as the lyrics. And, and all hail Chris Witch Hunter, rest in peace, the classic drummer. He wrote the lyrics to this song, and I love the uh, lyric... Uh, I'm trying to remember. Uh, uh, I'm trying to remember how it went, but uh, in the Crippler, he goes, uh, what the fuck was it? You cross the line, I will break your spine. The Crippler. The Crippler. Uh, but also, uh, the song... Uh, Chris Benoit much? <laughs> <laughs> but um, other great, great tracks, like uh, a song that I wish Rammstein would cover, Vocturm. Because it's yes. so fitting of Rammstein's style musically and lyrically. Talking about getting rid of Jehovah's Witnesses saying, let me watch my pornos, fuck off. But uh, my favorite song, the title track, Tapping the Vein. It's got so much to it. And even the closing track, uh, Reincarnation, which is almost eight minutes, is an epic. But Tapping the hey, Vein... anything is possible. Did, did, didn't Rammstein cover Kraftwerk? Yeah, anything that's is there. possible. And also, it's fitting Vokturm lyrics all in German, so there you go. Um, but anyways, and then the third one in this tie, Seasons in the Abyss by Slayer. It's on my list. I mean, the, in my opinion... Number seven. In my opinion... Number seven. In my opinion, the last truly classic Slayer album. Mm -hmm. Divine Intervention was good, but the production was not the best. Undisputed Attitude, an underwhelming cover album... Diabolus can go fuck itself. <laughs> uh, God Hates Us All was alright. Christ Illusion and World Pain of Blood were the closest of the last later era Slayer that came close to reaching classic status. Even Repentless, meh. But Seasons in the Abyss, I mean, you start off... I mean, probably one of the best openers and bookends of an album. You start with War Ensemble, and you end with the title track. But there's some great songs in between, like Dead Skin Mask, Skeletons of Society. Oh, I love that one. Uh, mm -hmm. Spirit in Black, Blood Red. Expendable Youth, I think, is their most underrated song. 
on this album. Hollowed Point and Born of Fire, Great Thrashers. But yeah, Seasons in the Abyss, you can't go wrong. For my number five, now we're into the top five. My number five, in my opinion, two of the best prog albums of the decade. And they both are very much like, again, kind of like Autopsy and Asphyx. Companions, they're like brothers. First, Opeth Still Life. Mm. Ah. I mean, this, along with Ghost Reveries and Blackwater Park, are in like a three-legged race for the best Opeth album. And Still Life, <laughs> arguably not only just a transition into the prog, but also... Because with the first two albums, Orchid and Morning Rise, it was like prog black death. My Arms, Your Hearse was definitely prog death. Whereas Still Life, it's prog death, but more on the prog end of the scale. Mm-hmm. I mean, you start it's off It's a transition with, album. Yeah, a transition to what you would hear them do on Blackwater Park going forward through to Watershed. But when you start off with this beautiful, uh, clean guitar, and then this like really relaxing folky acoustic before it goes balls to the wall with the moor and then godhead's lament a heavy monster benighted and face of melinda the two more more melodic tracks moon Laps vertigo serenity painted death mm. white cluster even is a great closer and i can't i can't continue with this it's just awesome and then the other album next to it edge of sanity crimson of course, of course. I mean, in my opinion, along with Blackwater Park and another album I'm going to talk about later, best prog death metal albums. And this, definitely a little more melodic on the mellow death end of the scale than Opeth. But, I mean, one song, 40 minutes, features both Swano and Ackerfeld on vocals. And even a hypnotic psychedelic duet of the two was so beautiful it's amazing and then this album was so great it spawned a sequel seven years later that's just as good if only they got back together and recorded a third one to complete the trilogy i'm i would be all for it now for my final tie at number four well you know one of them allison chain's dirt yep (laughs) i mean yeah come out of the grunge scene but to me this is pure doom metal like, it's such so doomy. Like, you start off with Them Bones and you end with Wood, but amazing songs in between. Like, uh, Down in a Hole, which maybe for my funeral I would have that song be played. Possibly. Angry Chair. I love Angry, Angry Chair. is amazing, but my favorite, Rooster. Love Rooster. Ooh. Sick Man is yeah. an underrated song. And hell, even a funny little, like, 40-second clip of them trying to play the Iron Man riff with Tom Mariah joining in, messing around on vocals is fun. But even like uh, Hate to Feel is great. Damn That River, uh, Rain When I Die, Junkhead. The title track is underrated. And the song that would uh, namesake the band Godsmack. But... uh, yeah, perfect album. Best Alice in Chains album, in my opinion. Now for the other one. Artur, I think you I think you and Ricky might have this on the list. At number four, Painkiller, Judas Priest. Yeah. My it's, number, it's my number four, too. It's well, my number four, too. Number, number three. three. Hmm. But for me, personally, in my opinion, the best Priest album I, I disagree with people saying, like, this album, quote, reinvented thrash. Metallica and Slayer nah. were already doing an amazing job, but it was a great speed metal album with traditional added on top. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, you kick off with one of the best metal songs of all time, Painkiller. But there are some other great gems on here, too, like Between the Hammer and the Anvil, uh, Touch of Evil, uh, One Night Shot Nightcrawler is my favorite song Nightcrawler, of that, of that album. Nightcrawler is great. Uh, Leather mm-hmm. Rebel. Metal Meltdown is a great speed metal insanity track. Touch of Evil. I mentioned yeah, I mentioned Touch of Evil. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else even, is there? Even All even Guns Blazing great. Anthem, one Shot at Glory. Yeah, and even an underrated bonus track, Living Bad Dreams, is a good song, too. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Painkiller by Juice Priest, amazing. 
Now the remaining top three are singles. Starting off at number three, in my opinion, the best Sepultura album, Arise. Ooh. Perfect follow-up to Beneath the Remains. It's like the more polished version of Beneath the Remains, but with more diverse songwriting. Like, you get some more slower parts to showcase what the band can really do instead of just going do 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 all the time like they were on Beneath the Remains. And the title track, the opening title track, arguably Sepultura's best song. Uh, Dead Embryonic Cells, Desperate Cry. You start the album off with three classics. But even the even lesser... Isn't Mass Hypnosis also on that album? No, that's on Beneath the Remains. Oh, okay. But other great tracks on here, like Murder, uh, Altered State, Under Siege, Regnum IRA, uh, Infected Voice, and this version, one of the best cover songs of all time where they covered Orgasmatron by Motorhead. Oh, yeah. Top to bottom, perfect album, and I wear the shirt all the time, and... This was the last of the truly thrash days before they went all groove afterwards, starting with Chaos AD. Bloody roads. But number two, another band <laughs> that you can, in my opinion, you cannot talk about the 90s without death. But which album? Because I, I talked about it earlier in the show, or actually uh, before we started. Death, in my opinion, the best metal band to never release a bad album. Their two in the 80s are classics. Everything else in the 90s were classics. From spiritual healing through to sound of perseverance. But which one am I going with? In my opinion, the best prog death metal album of all time. Symbolic. Mm. Ooh. I have I have death on my list, but not symbolic. As well. As well. But it's I mean, my number two. There, there are times where I say individual thought patterns is the, my favorite. Human. But... I went with Symbolic because as far as, like, quality and uh, perfect songwriting, it's amazing. And Gene Hoagland on the drums, God bless you, you are amazing. I mean, the title tracks and one of their best songs, Zero Tolerance, um, Empty Words, you start off with this beautiful, melodic, clean guitar. It's Crystal Mountain, arguably the best prog death metal song of all time. Uh, even the closing track, Perennial Quest, which is like eight and a half minutes, amazing song with a beautiful uh, combo of the acoustics and a great solo. Uh, One Thousand uh, Eyes Cosmic, is underrated. Cosmic C might might give you a run for that money. <laughs> well, in terms of instrumentals, yes. But, um, yeah, top to bottom, amazing album. Arguably the best prog death metal album of all time. Now for my number one. And I am disappointed in you, Ricky. You thought Dirt would be my number one. I'm going to be honest. I thought you were going to have Death as your number one. It was close. But to me, there can only be one number one. Make a death. And arguably, bah! one of the top five best metal albums, period. Rust in Peace, Megadeth. Mm. It's on my list. I mean... It's my number six. I mean, Rust in I Peace... Did. I'm a six too. <laughs> but, oh, <Lord. laughs> but yeah, Rust in Peace. And this version, the original, not the shitty drum re recordings from 2004. Stop it. But, anyways. <laughs> yeah. But, anyways, Rust in Peace, arguably Megadeth's best album and the best thrash album of the decade. I mean, Holy Wars to Punishment do. What more can you say? Hangar 18, classic. Uh, Tornado of Souls, classic. The title track, classic. But there are underrated gems on here, like Take No Prisoners, Five Magics especially, Poison Was the Cure, Lucretia. Take No Prisoners, Take No Shit. Exactly. And even the two-minute bass track, Dawn Patrol, is great, showcasing David Elfson's ability as a bassist. So, top to bottom... The best Megadeth album. You some would say Peace Sells. It's a close second to me, but Rust in Peace. And in the and in the nineties, <clears throat> I might add that they also released a, another great album, Countdown to by Extinction. the name of Countdown to Extinction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. But yeah, Rust in Peace. One, uh, not only the best, in my opinion, uh, Megadeth album, arguably one of the top five best metal albums. Period. 
So yep. that is my list. Hannah, the floor is yours. Well, <laughs> um, well, actually, real I quick, don't... real quick, I almost, I actually just skimmed over this comment. Uh, real quick, before we get to yours, Hannah, uh, channel Morbid Angel is better than Death on YouTube. Oh, here we go. Oh. He uh, had on his list, he actually had the red sky, the red in the sky is yours. I forget who that's from. Wasn't that Caius? I'll look it up. I'll look it up. I'll look it up. No, that's Blues from the Red Sun. Oh, that that's right. Yeah, I'm trying to remember who did that album. But the rest I know off the top, right off the bat. Mm -hmm. uh, he has uh, Hivis Le Setar Os by Burzum. Oh, Burzum. Oh, that's a good album. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he also had Mental Funeral Autopsy, Fourth Crusade, Bold Thrower. He had Onward to Golgotha by Incantation as well. That's a great <gasps> one. Oh, I forgot that one. Uh, he also had Blessed Art of Sick, Morbid Angel. And he picked an underrated one that uh, always slips under my radar, Ness Fife by Demolich. Mm, which is bad. which is a great technical avant-garde death metal album, kind of like the Finnish version of Gore Guts. And speaking of Gore Guts, he has Considered Dead by Gore Guts, Last One on Earth, Asphyx, and Alice in Chains Dirt. So cool. All Start right, off. now Hannah, you may go. Uh, well, let's start with power metal. I actually have a tie on my number 10, and the first one, I mean, Arthur already said it, is Gamma Ray, Land of the Free, um, in my oh, opinion. <laughs> one of one of the best, maybe even, even the best German power metal album out there. Um, I simply love this album. Um, I already liked Kai Hansen's work with uh, Halloween, but um, I mean, when it comes to his solo project, to his band Gamma Ray, uh, Land of the Free is simply my favorite album, um, especially the album <laughs> op opener with Rebellion in Dreamland. I think it's a phenomenal song and it, it's a great start to a phenomenal album. Um, and the other album that is on my number 10 is uh, Hammerfall. With glory to the brave. Oh, I I knew that that would come up sooner or later. <laughs> I mean, while, while Lent to the Free has an amazing album opener, this album has an amazing album closer with the um with the song of the same name, Glory to the Brave. It's just mm -hmm. a beautiful, glorious piece of music and i love to sing along to that one and uh, the the remainder of the album is awesome as well um i think it's a perfect album they never released anything better than this one and uh, although they're they have released great albums glory to the Bra brave will always remain my favorite hammerfall album um on to number nine um, nine Nine, 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 nine. Um, <laughs> on to a, a legend, Bathory with Hammerheart. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, there are a few other albums I could have easily selected, like Blood on Ice. Um, but um, for me, the the defining album, uh, Bathory album of the nineties, will always be or will always remain Hammerheart, um, since it paved the way for the whole viking metal um genre that would explode later on that's the album uh, <laughs> i still need to get one on vinyl i only have blood fire death but wow uh, wow really you don't have it <laughs> I, and I've, I do? I've seen it I've and seen i do it too so I mean, I've seen it so often at uh, vinyl trading fairs and so on, but there were always other albums that I wanted to buy that are hard to get, uh, and um, Hammerheart, yeah. you can get that one quite easily. Understandable. Um, I, I think besides Blood, Fire, Death, this is certainly a perfect uh, one of the perfect albums uh, Bathory have released. There isn't a single wasted moment on this one. I especially... Uh, enjoy the second half of the album with amazing songs like Father to Son, Song to Hall mm -hmm. Up High, um, yep. and especially uh, One Road to Asa Bay. I mean, the storytelling um, of Quorthon uh, is simply divine. Um, 
other th songs where he uh, also tells epic stories like the lake and so on uh, immediately come to mind. But I think the best one on this album is uh, without doubt one road to Azerbaijan about the uh, arriving Christians uh, uh, converting the heathens uh, with force to their faith and uh, like it happened all over Europe. Um, once Christianity became the main religion in the Roman Empire um, and the later the many kingdoms of Europe. Um, great, great story. I, I love I love the storytelling. I love the album in general. It's an amazing album. Um, on to number <laughs> number eight. Uh, I doubt uh. that anybody has this on their mm. list. Um, it's basically... Um, the first ever true dark metal <laughs> record um and it's or or the second one to be honest it's bethlehem uh dictius tenecare Ooh. Mm. you shall not kill in uh, latin or du sollst nicht töten in german um i somehow managed to find the picture rhino I'm very proud of myself that I did that because it's a really rare album. And um, the thing why I like this album so much, it's because, I mean, why black metal and death metal can be evil at times. This one is truly evil. Um, the vocals on here are haunting. They're shrill at times and desperate, uh, like somebody is being tortured. Um with this weird mixture of music thrown in the mix sometimes it's fast sometimes it's very atmospheric or doomy uh, experimental avant-garde um i really like this weird mixture of music on this album um i mean if you of course most songs or all songs on this album are in german so <laughs> it might be a bit a bit of a weird choice for um, many non-German speakers. But then uh, again, but, but then again, we listen to Ramstein, so yeah. But but this one is yeah. is a lot less accessible than Ramstein. I mean, if you want to check out a song of this song, I would suggest Tagebuch einer uh, Tagebuch uh, einer Todgeburt. <laughs> this song is fucking evil, um, but most of the songs on here are is evil. I could have easily selected Dark Metal, the predecessor, or the album that came out before. Dictius Tinecare, both are amazing albums. I love Bethlehem, um, and nowadays they have only are from Dark and Nocturne Slaughtercut as singer. It's just amazing. Um, one of the little underground gems that I enjoy once in a while. Well, and now to my number seven. I have a four-way tie on my number seven. And <laughs> the only way to describe this four-way tie is a black metal orgy. Um, oh. um, I just had to include all of these albums because they're, they are groundbreaking. Um, each and every one of them. First one, I have Ulver with Berktat. Um, oh, Obviously, <laughs> the the debut that changed everything. I mean, it was one of the first black metal records to include Again, folk, folk really elements. Black, not really black metal. <laughs> yeah. But, oh boy, here we go. But, but I mean, out of the disc discography, together with Nathan's Montreal, it's certainly one of the yeah most yeah. black metal albums uh, they have released. And I simply love the mishmash of folk and melodies and black metal and uh, Garms singing or uh, Christoph, Christopher Riggs singing. Um, it's one of it out of the original um, Ulver trilogy is my favorite. And I mean, you can spin this whenever you like. It's simply a great album. Uh, the same applies to the second album. Um, it's Arntor by Windia. Um, Ooh, it's a bit Windia. more refined. It's a bit more refined than um, Bergtat, but uh, but still you hear the Norwegian folk uh, folklore influences on here. Um, most songs are in uh, the native Norwegian, Western Norwegian dialect, and it's just I I, I love this album. Every song on this album is great. Um, I love Windier. Besides 1184, it's certainly my favorite Windier album, and I just can spin this every every time. 
Um, then I have uh, something from Sweden now for a change. The, the section, the somber lane. Mm. I mean, Levi already talked about it. This section released awesome uh, music in the 90s. I personally prefer the somber lane over storms of a, uh, of a night, li mm. uh, light span, but that's just a thing of personal preference. Yeah. Uh, again, an album that you can spin every time every day and it doesn't get old it's fresh and it's it's a bit more brutal a bit more has, has more blackish elements uh, and de uh, no not black uh death elements than yeah. most other black metal bands of that time it's but it's amazing and then the last last black metal album on my number seven i mean it could have been pure holocaust but i'm a big fan of at the heart of winter immortal has to be on here um mm -hmm. It's a bit more melodic. It's a little more, a little more death metal approach in terms of the riffs. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the rhythms. I mean, it's typical. Yeah. It's typical Abath and Demonas at their best. <clears throat> um, there isn't a wasted moment on here. I love "At the Heart of Winter" the song and uh, with with and the Fall of Time." Yeah, uh, I love that song. Two of my mm -hmm. favorite of the uh, of songs of that album. I just love that album together with "Pure Holocaust." Um, Great fucking black metal. Hail Abath. Um, Abath. Well, Abath. <laughs> Abath. Abath. I'd go take a shower. <laughs> and I actually forgot to mention, funny enough, with the somber lane, that opening track, Black Horizons. Fun fact, as revealed by Dan Swano himself, mm -hmm. that that high falsetto yeah, that was, was him. him. That was him. Because that song wasn't even demoed. They just put that together in the studio because they were all just Last having a, such a good time. And they're like, you know what? Let's do this song as the opener. And Dan, how about you join in on keys and the uh, high scream? Ah! And it was it was <laughs> great. So, but anyway. Yeah, on to number, number six, away from the black metal to the thrash metal. I ha actually have two albums on my number six. First one, Megadeth, Rust in Peace. Uh, ah. What can I say about this album? I mean, Holy Wars, The Punishment Do, Hangar 18, Tornado of Souls. Do I have to say more? Nope. And that's why I'm shutting up, because it's a fucking fantastic album. <laughs> um, without doubt, the peak of thrash metal, in my opinion, of the... At least 90s thrash yeah. together with seasons in the abyss by slayer mm. to this day it's my favorite slayer album uh, mainly because dead skin mask is on here and dead skin mask is my favorite slayer song together with uh, raining blood um but mm. other songs are great as well i love this album my favorite slayer album enough uh, sets from my favorite thrash metal albums of the 90s to my favorite death metal album of the 90s. Surprise, surprise, Entombed, Left Hand Path. Um, <laughs> it's my favorite death metal album ever, and it's my favorite death metal of the 90s as well. Um, best death metal opener ever with the self-titled song, Left Hand Path. Um, I simply love that horror in window in between. Yeah. I don't I don't need to add anything. Yeah, and also I, I do want to mention there are a couple other around the same time as Left Hand Path albums that should get some uh credit. Uh Dismembers uh Override of the Overture, which came out a year mm -hmm. later. That's a great album. Into uh Into the Grave by Grave. Um uh, Beyond the Creation of Time by Unleashed, that's a great one, and Dark Recollections by Carnage. I feel all five of those albums are like the big Swedish death metal family together. Like you listen to Left Hand Path, you gotta listen to the other ones to like get where every other band was coming from. Whereas Dismember was going for the more evil, brutal style. Unleashed going for the more Viking. Uh, punky vibe, Grave going for the more thrash, and then Carnage kind of a little bit of grind within, but just wanted to throw some mentions to that scene because it deserves it. Uh, we're back from death metal to black metal. I simply have to put those two albums on here. First one, 
Um, Mayhem, The Mysterious Dom Satanas. The most, uh, the album with the most tragic backstory ever. Yep. Uh, but mus- musically, it's it's in my opinion an awesome album as well. I mean, you have you have uh, Freezing Moon on here, um, Pagan Fears, Life Eternal, um, The Mysterious Tom Satana, Funeral Fog, and, yeah, Buried every- Buried by Time oh. and Dust, one of my personal mm-hmm. favorites. Nothing but every- blasting, like. How do you yes. play that at three and a half mm-hmm. minutes straight and not get tired, Hellhammer? How do you I do mean, it? Hellhammer can do that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's Hellhammer. Damn it. It's Hellhammer. It's like I mean, Necro Butcher. I've, I've seen them <laughs> twice playing the entire album and it was simply amazing. Um, the only thing I kind of wish for is that that had still been alive, uh, would have still been yeah. alive. And the song the Carnage recording. being on the album. Mm. I would have loved to have heard I, this properly yeah, I, recorded I, version of Carnage. I, well, I personally don't have any complaints about the selection of songs. I simply enjoy. Well, just album. to add it on, just to add another song, just for mm-hmm. the hell of it. But yep. yeah, well, I've seen it live, and I like it the way it is. I do like it the way it is opinion. with Dead, but it would have been mm-hmm. cool to hear it be on uh, the Mysterious. But it is what it is, and a great cover by Behemoth, who did it too. So mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, a lot of a lot of great artists have covered songs of this album, but I mean, the original is just Freezing Moon, especially. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even Vader mm-hmm. covered it. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I love this album. It has a special place in my heart, as is true for uh, the next album uh, on my number three, uh, number four, and that has to be uh, Philosophen by Burzum. Mm. I mean, if I have. If I have to talk about one of them, I have to talk about the other one. And I think both albums were important in their own way. Um, I mean, there are other albums you could talk about regarding Burzum, uh, everything that came out before Philosophem. Yep. But the reason why I like uh, Philosophem is, I mean, I love ABM. I love atmospheric black metal. And this is the album that kick-started uh, Everything that moved in this kind of atmospheric, ambient, lo-fi um, direction um, that emphasized more on um, atmosphere than anything else. And I mean, if you if you talk about if you talk about atmosphere, the first album that comes to mind is this album. It's slow. <laughs> uh, the lo-fi production even adds to it, and it's the electronic elements on here and everything in between. Um, I really like this album. Um, mm-hmm. It's it's a very, um, I mean, it it basically has everything that uh, one th- uh, thrives uh, searches for regarding atmospheric black metal. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can listen to it, um, you can just listen to it and enjoy it, but at the same time, you can put it somewhere in the background and still enjoy it mm-hmm. while doing something else. And that's one of the things about ABM. Um, it's it it can it it can fit uh, it, in most situations, and um, I really like like this about uh, the album, especially mm-hmm. on um, on the songs uh, Dunkelheit. I think that's probably the strongest uh, song, and uh, mm-hmm. the, the 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 Rundgang um die Transzendentale, whatever I forgot. Mm-hmm. For the, the longest song, the the twenty five minute song on here. I I really enjoy this album. Um, I mean, if if I have to add, or I must, I must add the mysterious Oma Satanas, then I also have to add this one. And, and talk um, about a wonderful contrast, you know, with mm-hmm. Burzum being that atmospheric, melodic style, and yeah. Mayhem being just pummeling, brutal the whole time. Yeah, and the thing is, without Burzum, uh. <clears throat> Mayhem wouldn't have been where they are today, mm-hmm. and the same same is true the other way around. Without without um, without Mayhem, there wouldn't be Burzum. They it's a synergy between the, uh, both of them, um, despite all the tragedies that happen. And controversies, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I do want to say this to this day. I don't know who in the freezing moon thought it was a good idea to put the music video for Dokenheim. On VH1. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody <laughs> lost her job that day. 
either somebody lost their job or someone got a big ass promotion. <laughs> maybe maybe Bark <laughs> worked for VH1. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> but anyways. Well, um, now let's move to another genre yet again, and that's what I like about the 90s, is that <clears throat> heavy metal, got, or metal in general, got so di diverse, um, and all those little subgenres exploded, and the next one I'm going to talk about is industrial metal, and uh, I also, again, have two albums on my number three. Um, in my opinion, the big juggernauts of the of industrial metal of the 90s and late 80s um, will always be Ministry. Um, one of the most energetic live bands I've ever seen. And uh, the album that immediately comes to mind is their most uh, commercially successful work, uh, Psalm 69. Um of course, it's political. Uh, Al Jorgensen has always been political, but in this context, I enjoyed immensely, especially on songs like New World Order, with all those little George uh, Bush um, snippets th yeah. thrown in the mix. It's just so fitting. And, and then when they play it live, uh, it develops this kind of raw energy, and you just want to... Um, Bang. You want to, you, to bang your head, you want to jump, you want to scream, you want to mosh, everything in between. Um, one of the most intense uh, co life experience I've ever uh, had, um, Ministry, without doubt. But there are so many awesome songs on here. Uh, just I mean, One be, Fix. Be it, be it, mm -hmm. Yeah, Just One Fix. That one is is amazing life as well. Or, or I mean, Jesus bought my hot rod. Who doesn't like that? It's mm -hmm. fucking fantastic. Um, I mean, other ministry albums are awesome as well, but in my opinion, this is the best and will always be the best for me. Um, and alongside ministry, I have the Oh, obviously. Yep. Obviously. <laughs> Ob I mean, <laughs> in the 90s, the little... Berlin-based project Rammstein all started and <laughs> immediately became big with uh, being featured in Lost Highway and so on, but it really blew up with uh, Sehnsucht. I mean, if in when I was in America, I was surprised how many people actually know Du Hast, whereas uh, Engel is the big song here in Germany. But there are so many awesome songs on here like uh, Sehnsucht, uh, Tier, and the, and the song And the song that blew... Rammstein behind the atmosphere, the atmosphere, do, do hast. <laughs> yeah, I do hast, bitch. Yeah. And, and now, now and when oh, I hear I do hast, I can't help but think of that fucking DJ Cummerbund mashup with Play That Funky Music now. Thanks, Ricky. <laughs> that, that is funny. <laughs> but I mean, there are other oh. songs on here that are great, like Alter Mann, I versucht küss, küss mich. Uh, mm. I, lo I love Spiel mit mir, uh, mm. Klavier. I mean, there isn't a bad song on here, and that's what makes it so good. It's, it's certainly less experimental and uh, more refined than Ministry, but still amazing. Um, and one of their best works. Um, well, now to my number two. Well, what could it be? What could it be? It isn't Alice in Chain, but it is this year. Caius. Should have known. Yeah, Caius. Caius. I just love Caius. <laughs> I can listen to this every day, every time, easily. Um, I just love this desert rock atmosphere. Um, driving around the, the plains with your car and music banging out of your stereo and um some people might smoke a bit i yep. don't do that me, but, neither. me neither um but it certainly i mean i for me the music is enough to evoke certain feelings and it's just it's just a great atmospheric uh desert rock album um much in line with later works uh, of bands like electric wizard and sleep um it's just I, I like this atmosphere once in a while, it's, but this one for me is like the pinnacle of everything stoner and um, sludge doom related. And the, the opener, Gardenia, it's perfect. 
the bass on here is super tasty. The guitar sound uh, or the guitars that were put through a bass amplifier are just they they're so warm and fuzzy and captivating. I mean, I could t ramble about this album for ages because I love it so much. It's one mm -hmm. of the albums I love most from from start to finish. Everything is perfect. Um, and one could argue a good companion to that album, Sleep Holy Mountain. Yes. Yeah. Companion I mean, to it. I mean, most albums by Sleep or Electric Wizard, um, they're like little, little children of this album, but this <laughs> this year is the daddy. And... Um, so I so like so will that make Black Sabbath the grandpa? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Master of Reality <laughs> could easily be the grandpa of this one, but um, this one here is my favorite out of all of them, and it will always remain that way. I love Caius. Uh, Welcome to Sky Valley. It's just awesome. Um, and I rambled about it, and I did, and I'm sorry, but. I just have mm. to. And then my number one, Archer has it on his number one as well. The I actually, Lord. Lord. I actually <laughs> have two in my number one. Yep. As Levi says, without this one, there cannot be anthems. It's complement to each other. Yeah. And for me... I, I must say that I enjoy uh, Nights at Eclipse a bit more than Anthems. I think they're both phenomenal. Um, they're true, true pieces of art. Um, and they elevated black metal, uh, Norwegian black metal, to unknown and unreached heights. Those heights have, have never been reached again. Um, will not be reached again. It's just too perfect, this album. Um... Uh, it's just a lovely little thing, I, and for me, the best the best um, comes throughout the end of the album. I just love um, towards the pantheon, uh, the ma the majesty of the night sky. Uh, I am the black wizard. I mean, talk about screwed up, fucked up lyrics. Cut um, me and, to my creation and times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one is awesome as well. But uh, I mean, my crown jewel, Inua Satana. Um, I love this album, and I've talked about it before. I don't need to talk about it more. That's all that's needed. It's a fucking great album, and the best album that came out in the 90s, in my opinion. Arthur. <coughs> okay, so I do have two ties on my... And it's at number 9 and number 10. At number 10... I have hard, uh, hard work by Carcass. Since I cannot put either my favorites, which is Rick of Putrefaction and Sons and Symphonies of Sickness, hard work stays here. That came out in 93. And, I, and <laughs> I've put a death album on my list, but I, I can only sum up the, that album in just two words. Spirit Crusher! Oh, oh son of the Perseverance. It's in my list. The sound, the sound of perseverance that came out in '98. I mean, yeah, it, it, if not, if not, because it was the last death album that we ever got. Despite the the revolving lineup with Richard ha with uh, Shannon Ham and uh, R Richard Christie, I mean, still, it is a a great album. So is Heart Work, which also became pun intended, the swan song for cri for traditional carcass before Surgical Steel. I do have a Motorhead album on, on my list, and in the 90s, at number 9, Motorhead, they did a lot of good stuff in the 90s. Despite what many people say, Sacrifice, it is a hell of an album to, to listen. That came out and if you know wrestling, you probably know, in 1995, Adrian Adonis, if you don't know who, who that was. <laughs> and I and uh, the other tie at my number nine, nine, it is an album that I'm shocked that nobody has mentioned. 
and it's probably one of Wasp's best albums of the 90s. The <laughs> Crimson Idol. I knew you were going there. Once mm-hmm. you said Wasp, I'm like, there can only be one. <laughs> <clears throat> Although Kill Fuck that, although KFD, it is a hell of an album too. Mm-hmm. But but the Crimson Idol, the whole story of Chainsaw Charlie and the kid becoming the star, but later s- killing himself with his own guitar strings. Whoa, it is a concept album beyond belief. Now, at number eight, yep, uh. I have an album. That also came out in 1995. Although I've put this album here because I do have a personal history with it. Paralyzed Lost, Lost Draconian Times. I do have a personal history with this album. But still, this it is a bit the transition from death metal. Yeah, from death metal Paradise Lost to what would later become gothic metal Paradise Lost. I mean, mm-hmm. Enchantment, Hollowed Land. Forever Failure, Shadow Kings, Shades of God, and even Jaded. I mean, this album, as I said, it it helped me through a a very tough period in my life, but it's still a beautiful album. At number seven, Seasons in the Abyss, Mm -hmm. that came out in 1990. I mean, what more needs to be said? Dead Skin Mask, Skeletons Skeletons of Society, War Assemble, and Seasons in the Abyss. No need to say any more. Also, I don't need to say anything more about my number six, which is Rust in Peace by by Megadeth. And still some of my favorite songs also came out of, of Rust in Peace. I mean, Tornado. No need to say anything. At number five, The Black Album by... Mm. The Black Album by Metallica. And just like Levi, <laughs> although I will still forever love my... Unforgiven, wherever I may roam, sad but true. Enter Sandman, which is, which I which I know how to play in the drums. There are here some songs that I do love just a little bit better, of Wolf and Man, of course, and one of the songs that a song that has one of the bass best bass intros, the God that failed, which I can play that bass intro. Mm-hmm. Number four. Judas Priest's Painkiller. I will, I will not say that this is a comeback album for Judas Priest, but... Mm. A if return this, to form this, album. I would say... <clears throat> which was Ram It Down. But I would mm-hmm. say that this is more of a gateway towards the 90s. Even though we know that Judas Priest wasn't by this time as at its peak, especially after what happened with the suicide of those two kids and Rob Halford's personal demons, Painkiller mm. still came out as an absolute masterpiece that would easily be on the same level as Sad Wings of Destiny, British Steel, Defenders of the Faith, and even Screaming mm-hmm. for Vengeance. And out of out of this album, Nightcrawler and A Touch of Evil are my personal favorite songs. Although, All Guns Blazing, Hell Patrol, One Shot at Glory, and of course... Painkiller itself. And real quick, actually, uh, real quick earlier when I was talking about that uh, comment of somebody saying their top ten, I now figured out what that red, the red in the sky is ours album. It was by At the Gates. It was uh, their Mm -hmm. debut. Slaughter of the Soul. No, it was uh, the red in the sky is ours by At the Gates that the guy had on his list. But continue. There is an album here that uh, I'm regret I'm regretting not having here, but I'll make it a, a quick honorable mentions, which is "Ceremony of Opposites" by Semi Hell, that fused <clears throat> both industrial and black metal in one. That came out in ni- in ninety four. But number three, I won't go into too much detail. <clears throat> it's the mysterious mm. Don Satanas by mm-hmm. by Mayhem. Some of you are kind of spoiled. My number two, how can I do this without talking about Blind Guardian? I mean, I could have put here, follow the blind, imaginations from the other side, but there can only be one, Nightfall in Mm Middle-Earth. I mean, War Into the Storm, Nightfall itself, Mirror Mirror, one of my personal favorite songs of the entire 
Blind Guardian catalog, Time Stand Still at the Iron Hill, Thorn. This is the concept of concepts with the Silmarillion by Tolkien and possibly you can find just a little bit of everything here. You want speed, Into the Storm, and Mirror Mirror. You want more ballads, you have Thorn, you have Nightfall itself. You want something in the middle, Time Stand Still at the Iron Hill, and so forth. Now, my number ones, yeah, I'm gonna ch I'm gonna call someone in the night side eclipse. Yeah, I will I will love in the night side eclipse, but there's something to be said about albums that are complement to each other, just as Levi said. And in my number one, it's both night side eclipse that came out in '94. And Anthems at the Welkin at Dusk that came out in 97. I mean, this was the year, this was the, de the decade of black <clears throat> metal. And I could have put here a whole different bunch of albums. <clears throat> I could have put here Pentagram. I could have put here Blaze of the Northern Sky, which I do love. I could have put here so many stuff. But as a fan of the more epic parts of metal, Nightside Eclipse and Anthems to the Welkin at Dusk, they're a perfect complement to each other. Especially with songs, Nightside Eclipse, as mentioned. Inua Satana, Black Wizards, Towards the Pantheon, The Infinity of Thoughts. But it can be complemented with Anthems to the Welkin at Dusk. The Oath, The Night Spirit, Lost in Curse of Reverence. One of my favorite instrumentals of all time, The Wanderer. I mean, Emperor... Whatever people might say that they can be overrated, which I don't, be which I don't believe. There are more black metal bands out there that can be more overrated, but this these albums can be divisive, especially when with the albums that came out later <laughs> from Cradle, which I'm regretting not to put here. Cruelty and the Beast by Cradle of Field. Mm -hmm. Forgot about it. Either too. that or. Either that or Funeral in Carpathia as well. But Emperors in the Nightside Eclipse, it can be tough to to enjoy it, especially if you love the more truer stuff, cult stuff of black metal. <coughs> Sorry. But to me, there, are, there will always be some of the best black metal albums of all time. Even if you consider them symphonic, which I don't disagree one bit. And finally, Ricky. So this was really tough, to be honest. It took me... I finished it actually last night, my list at the very last minute. But it was a good list. So at number 10, uh, Dissection, Storm of the Light's Bane. I love him when both Death and Black Metal blend together equally. And, um, you know, uh, The Sombrini is a great album, but I'm always going for Storm of the Light's Bane. I mean, especially in where dead where dead angels die. Probably one of my favorite guitar songs to play on guitar, yep. which it's kind of hard to play. But if you get to it, it's a really good song to play to. I mean, God, it's an album that I won so badly on my collection, but I haven't had the chance to get it yet. Number nine, nine. I have Slayer Seasons in the Abyss. Probably the last album of the uh, good of the good Slayer the albums after era. we of the classic era mm -hmm. before we went to the '90s stuff. I mean, the Dead Mask. I mean, when you listen to that song and look at the album cover, it fits the song so well. The title track this is basically one of the best songs they ever recorded. I mean, it's it's a great album to listen to, and probably a lot of I would recommend this to. To a new Slayer fan to listen first before they go into the heavier stuff like Rain in Blood. Hello and um, Hello Waits. So yeah, because he's in the business is a great starter. Number eight. <coughs> yeah, I have <laughs> it's the first of four ties. And it's my grunge slash alternative metal list. I have Alice in Chains' Dirt. And Nirvana's Nevermind. Mm. Levi has talked about Alice in Chains being that they're not really grunge, grunge, because I don't consider them grunge, they're more of a doom alternative metal band that this album just skyrocketed to, their, to the stratosphere. And Stanley, whatever you believe in, one of the most 
underrated vocalist of the 90s. I mean, the guy could scream like, holy fuck. And with Nirvana, with uh, never mind, I mean, we all know the hits, so Electing Spirit overplayed to the fucking death, but it's still, it is one of the most influential grunge albums of the 90s, even though tragically we know what happened in 94 with Kurt Cobain yep. shot himself. But I digress. Influential albums. And real quick, uh, speaking of alternative metal, there's one alternative metal album in the 90s none of us ever talked about that it just came into my mind. That's Angel Dust by Faith No More. Mm, Completely forgot that's about That's a good Faith one. No oh, mm -hmm. yeah. But continue. Num number seven is my death tie. At the gates, Lord of the Soul. I got into Slaughter of Soul thanks to Sam Dunn who did the f documentary on the entire album and I gotta admit I was never the huge I'm to this day I'm not the biggest death metal fan but this album it is one of the few exceptions that I can say I can listen to the entire album and not get bored of it because it's so melodic so crisp it's almost like Sam says it's almost perfect to the core that of course Swedish death metal and all that my other one on my list is the death album that I was talking about. I could have gone with human. I could have gone with uh, symbolic. But to me, my personal favorite will always be The Sound of Perseverance. So progressive, melodic. I mean, the freaking cover of Painkiller. One of the best cover Chuck songs was, of all time. I don't know how Chuck was able to like, do it, do that, because... God, he just... I'm just imagining he must have squeezed fucking balls and just scream like... Ah! Ah! And yeah, that I scream at the, at the beginning of Painkiller is legendary. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, I, plus, plus the album cover is kind of a bit sad, but yet, you know, peaceful. But again, who would have thought this was going to be their last album? And at number six... I'm surprised nobody mentioned anything of gothic metal. I have both here. Typo negatives, bloody kisses, and you know there's one. I mentioned course, it. It's on my it's on my honorable mentions. And of course, there is not one episode I cannot talk about this band. Ames Greatest Love Songs Volume 666. Of course. <laughs> Both these albums were the child of, of the Yin and Yang. Metal band. The yin and yang of the 90s, because you can't talk one without the other. You have both from Typo Negative, more um, doomier, gothic side. And with Greatest Love Songs, you have more of a symphonic, more orchestral, more beautiful lyrics. I mean, those two albums are some of the best gothic metal albums out there. If we do a gothic metal list, we're going to be high on my list. Mm -hmm. At number five... It is my unholy, or well not really, I don't know if I should call it unholy trinity, or death trinity, or doom tr uh, trinity. Anyway, it's three albums of that, to me, define the best death doom albums of the 90s. My Dying Brides, Like Gods of the Sun. Ooh. Anathema's The Last Enigma. And of course, Gothic by Paradise Lost. Hmm. You went the Peaceville 3 there, I... Mm, I, went, I went with yeah. the Peaceville 3. With my dying bride, the reason I like Gods of the Sun is because I could have gone with Flowers of Within, I could have gone with Turn the Swans, but with this album, Aaron stopped doing the dead growls and just became more clean vocals, which I think added a lot of atmosphere to the album. I mean, you got songs like I Remember You, the the title track um, for My Fallen Angel, one of the most beautiful songs they've ever done with the cello and all that. It just brings a lot of atmosphere to Death Doom, even though Par My Dying Bride were more beginning to be more of a gothic doom man, but still having that Death Doom elements. With God, with Paradise Lost, gothic, I mean... I could have gone with the debut, Lost Paradise, which is a phenomenal yep. album. But to me, this is probably their best next to Draconian Times. And, uh, you know, you got Gothic, uh, Angel Tears, The Painless, Dead Emotion. 
And the fact this copy is actually a double CD comes with the the CD and the Lost Tapes DVD that they did in the early days of the band, which is kind of cool to have a little piece of history with Paradise Lost. Anasama. Oh god. Oh god. You guys know how much I. Uh, I mean, to me, if Anasama were to go back to listen to the discography, listen to this album, you Anasama, <laughs> come on, please oh, bring have, back, bring from, back the Death they, Doom elements back to your band, and not with the fucking bullshit of the two thousand stuff and on. Which I'm gonna mention Anasama in the next episode. I'm gonna tear that a new asshole. <laughs> But I just love this album so much. I just wish Anasama could listen to this album and realize what they were. One of the pioneers of Death Doom, Gothic Doom. And look what they are right now. They're on hiatus, but look at their discography. It's just fucking poster bullshit. Now ask me how I really feel about that. <laughs> oh, shit. Number four. Ramshine's Herzlite. Now I was really lucky to get Zenzo. I mean, why did I say Herzlite? <laughs> Zenzo. I don't know why. Brain I fart. I Brain fart. I don't know why. Yeah. Anyway, Zenzo. That's my job to have brain farts, not yours. <laughs> Zenzo. I mean, at it's hard for you to listen to Ramstein's songs on YouTube, so. I decided to get it on CD because I really enjoyed the the the, the songs. I mean, Zeng Zog, Bish Bish, Jog Dish, which every time I listen to that song, I think of Flake, oh, Flake, 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 Flake. I mean, Curse the Meech, Flesh Flash, it might, might be the most <laughs> oddest song of the album, especially if you know the translations of a fucking frog. Those, every time it like cuts me off guard. Ultraman, one of, probably one of the best ballads that Ramsham has ever done. I mean, Clave, I mean, this almost actually great. And of course, Duhas, and of course, Duhas, the monsters uh, single that led Ramsham to their big success. But now that song's kind of tainted for me now, thanks to you, Ricky, because of that mashup. Play that funky music, Rob Stein. Nine. Nine. <laughs> I can't stop oh. listening to that now. Oh, I'm I'm still listening to the Wem uh, Slayer mashup. I need to I check can't that out. I can get that thing out of my head. Yeah. And Archer just left. No. I think he's trying to figure out, like, why his camera yeah. was sideways. Yeah. And my number three, Judas Priestess. Painkiller. Well, you guys have talked about painkiller, so I'm not going to say enough, but I'm just going to say Jesus Priest didn't need to go heavy metal. They were already heavy metal. Number two, the unholy trinity of New Rich and Black Metal. Mayhem's The Mysterious Dome Satanas. Emperors in the Nine Side Eclipse. And Dark Thrones, A Blaze in the Northern Sky. What can we say that we already been said? Three influential albums of the genre. I could have gone with Burzum's uh, Dark and High. I could have gone with Pure Holocaust with Immortal. But to me, those three albums are what defines Norwegian black metal. The three different styles of black metal that eventually become symphonic metal, raw black metal, uh, just, you know, crazy shit. And that, you know. And my number one. I am shocked nobody has mentioned this album. If you guys know me, you know I like the weird stuff in the 90s. So it's going to be, a, it might be a shocker to you that I might have a similar one. My number one, Angie Christ Superstar by Marilyn Manson. Of course. <laughs> if you, if you want to talk about diversity, you want to talk about I guess not really political, even though Manson was in a way political in a way. This album is yours. I mean, you got the beautiful people, probably the anthem of the late 90s. You got Little Horn. You got freaking 
uh, Warmer Boy, you got Torquist, you got so many good songs that eventually it will, they will get stuck in your brain a lot. And I could have gone with uh, Mechanical Albums, which is a good album, which has some more of a diverse glam metal esque Glam sound. and blues style. Yes. But to me... Basically like modern decided, day David Bowie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But to me, when we decided to do this episode, this was the first album that popped up. His best work, best songs. I mean, it's Manson. You can't get enough of Manson. Yeah. It's my list. All right, and now the real work begins. Ooh, Coming up with God. the final ten. I think straight off the bat in the Night Side Eclipse goes number one. Yeah, Night Side Eclipse yeah. one, Rust in Peace Rust in two. Peace two. I, yeah. I, I personally, I would flip those two, but I can live with it. I can live with it. All right, let, let me put it one. So number one, Night Side Eclipse. Number three, though. Uh, and number two, what was it? Rust in Peace. I mean, we peace. could we could tie Rust in Peace with uh, Seasons in the Abyss. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, we could. Number three, I think we have to give that to Painkiller. Number three. Yeah, I mean, we all had it really th- kind of high on the list. Mm-hmm. Wait, either either Painkiller or The Mysterious. I mean, we could have... We could, I could put Mysterious 3, Painkiller 4. Yeah, The Mysterious we'll go, 3. I'll go there. Number 5... Hmm. What what about Left Hand Path? I mean, all of us had that one. I didn't mention Left Hand Path. Or I forgot. Uh, I think only you and I brought it up, Anna. But I think Left Hand Path should be up there, maybe lower on the list. <laughs> I, I don't care as long as it's on the list. Yeah. The only album that I really want to see on the list is Caius, although I was the only one. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, and okay. Arthur's so, finally back. Oh, Arthur's back. All right, okay. so Arthur. So now, uh, wait, wait. so Ricky's number three was Painkiller. His number two was The Mysterious, Blaze in the Northern Sky, and then The Nightside Eclipse. And his number one was Marilyn Manson, Antichrist Superstar. Now we're working on the actual ten. So far we got Nightside at one, Rust in Peace and Seasons in the Abyss at two, The Mysterious three, Painkiller four, now, Left Hand Path, since only two of us had, I'd say we put that, like, number nine. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I'd say we could um, put that there. I mean, what about Bathory? We all Hammer Hard, I'd say I could put Bathory Hammer Hard at, like, eight or something. I mean, I... I, I did. Said, I mentioned Blood on Ice, but I'm okay with Hammer Hard being... I mean, Hammer the Hard's the more influential of the two. Yeah, and, uh, and more of the thing. Um, what about the Black Album? Black uh, album. Well, let's put that at ten. I could put that at I mean, ten. We can go with dirt. Dirt. That uh, number seven, perhaps. Oh, oh and could I, we, I, forgot, we could, I forgot this. I, I what actually about skipped. It? I actually skipped one of my. I actually skipped. I actually skipped one of my. Just, just quick. I actually skipped one of my honorable mentions, and Ricky might um, might not recognize this, but I've put here Orphan Atlantis Sahara. It's a good album. Bull mentions as well. I mean, what? What came if, out in '94? What if we tie Ellis in chains with Caius? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm fine. With, I'm fine with. It's up Caius to you. I did not put I'm, any I'm, any of them. I mean, I love Caius I mean, so I mean, much. I mean, you know what? I'm fine with Caius and Ellis in chains, even though they're bored. I mean, Alice in Chains and Kai, you could say, are kind of simmers and they're a bit sludgier, yeah. do me. And, and, and that's why I think it would make, make sense to tie them up. I mean, I'm, I'm okay, but what could be number five? Uh, what about number Rust, five? Rust, in, Rust in Peace is two, tied with two. Rust Seasons in the Abyss. Rust in Peace, yeah. Uh, so, right now, so right now, number one is Night Side Eclipse. Number two, Rust in Peace with Seasons in the Abyss. Number three, The Carcasses, Mysterious. Carcasses hard work. Oh, we need to put Sound of Perseverance up there. I can believe. Yeah. Sound of Perseverance? Yeah, because two of you guys Sound had it and three of us had Death in general. So. Or Sound of Perseverance or any Death album. Well, since two I of mean, you guys went with Sound of Perseverance, we'll go with that. And I can live yeah. with that. Let's go with Sound of Perseverance. Okay. Uh, 
All right. So some of us are in number five, or you want to put it somewhere else? Put it at six. Put it at six. We're still missing number five. I guess. Are we going to put any Pantera album? Uh, uh, Did we we go with Pantera? It had to be Cowboys from Hell. Because yeah. Are we just? Are we just put? All three on there: Cowboys, Cowboys from Hell, uh, Vulga Display of Power, and uh, Far Beyond Driven. Far Beyond Driven. I don't want to have too many ties, though. I'm good with that, it. That's the only thing. And I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying I mean, to think. If they, if they are, if they are from the same band, if they are from the well, same, if they're band, from the same band, that's it. fine. But I'm trying to think of like what other doubles or triples we had. Oh, Blaze in the Northern Sky. We need that up there. Mm. But where? Only you, Matt, I think. I have Blazing the Northern Sky at number two. Together with um, oh, okay, okay. with the Mysteries? Yeah, we could uh, go there. Yeah, we Because yeah, go. they are like a pair, yeah. if anything. Let's go with Blaze with the Mysteries. I mean, one could always add Philosophia. <laughs> okay, I I can see. I can see. <laughs> oh, boy. I can see. Uh, um, what about Carcass's hard work since... I think me and Levi had. I forgot hard work, but I would be fine having it in the list. I'm fine with putting it's a phenomenal album because it is a pillar album in the genre. So maybe put that. Maybe and... move everything up and put it at like ten or something. Right, so hard. Mm. Mm. So, so what do we got so far? So we got Nightside at one, Rust in Peace, and Seasons in Abyss two, The Mysterious and Blaze three, Painkiller four, five. We still don't know. Hmm. Because we have six, it's not a perseverance, and number ten, hard work. So we got. Well, we need five. left hand path in there. I mean, do, what about Ramstein? Yeah, I'm good do with we, it. Do we go with Zengzukt? Yes. But then we then we have to add Ministry as well. Ministry, of course. Uh, we could go Ministry and Zengzukt. I mean, we six. could. I mean, or if just, we have too many bands, we could probably uh, put Death together with Entombed. And Ministry and Rammstein together. Mm. I mean, I'm fine not having Zingzuk on the list. If we're gonna have um, Z- Psalm 69, I mean S- Psalm 69 has to be. I can go with that. I mean, if yeah, there's, if totally. there's one album from my list that I'm still one to fight for getting a spot in that Sepultura Arise, because that like. Wow. You want to talk, like I said, you talk about a big change up from uh, Beneath the Remains. It's like the more produced version of Beneath the Remains and a little more diversifying in the songs. Plus, it was the last thrash hurrah of the band before they went all green. I'm and good. Such. And I know there's no way they're going to have just, Christ Superstar And it's just as, and I would say Arise is just as influential as Beneath the Remains. Yeah, what is what is the list so far? Uh, number one, Night Side Eclipse. Number two, Rust in Peace with Seasons in the Abyss. Number three, The Mysterious with Blaze in the Orange Sky. Number four, Painkiller. Number five, Psalm 69. Number six, Son of Perseverance. And number ten, Heart Work. Well, so well we, we, seems- need, we need Alice in Chains in there. We need Dirt. And Caius. Facelift or dirt? Dirt. 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 Hands down, and, dirt. And you know what? I'm fine with Caius. Even though we'll I put Caius in the there. list. We need Caius. I need what? Caius. Dirt, dirt, and, dirt with and Caius. Caius. Welcome dirt to Sky Valley. Welcome to Sky Valley. What about <laughs> what about Dissection? Shouldn't we put Dissection in there? Many of I think Storm in the Lights Bane. Storm in the Lights or, Bane. Yeah. Yeah, because so Ricky and I both day. had it, and Hannah and, had Somber Lane, but ha- three uh, of us. Hammerheart. I'm good. Hammerheart. Hammer we need Hammerheart in good. there. Hammerheart. Make that number yeah. five. Let's put Hammerheart at five. Lights, Bane. Wait. Uh, so Hammerheart number any five. Any power metal album? We don't have I'm, any power metal. We don't have any power metal. If if we're gonna put one, I would go with Nightfall from Blind Guardian. I would go with that. Oh man! So okay, okay, okay. If we would power metal, that means we're gonna have to kick somebody out because we I got the ten. Just, so, just let's just leave the power metal on. Uh, I mean, so we 
I mean, the only ones who had power metal albums were Archer and I, but we had different albums. I mean, um, like, like I said, I don't mm-hmm. mind having many power metal. Some of us have a bit of a diverse, which is we're going there. Ah, oh, man. So, I for just, sure, just read out the list. Maybe we can put something right. together All right. again. Yeah. All right. For sure, num- number one, Nights of the Eclipse stays. Yeah. Number two, Rust in Peace and This is the Abyss stays. Yes. Number three, The Mysterious with Blaze and Lord yes. Sky stay. Number four, Painkiller. And number five, Psalm 69. Yes. Yeah. Number six, Son of Perseverance. Number seven, Dirt with Welcome to Sky Valley. Number number eight, mm-hmm. Storm of the Lights Blaine. Blaine. Number nine. <laughs> number nine, we're still debating. And number ten, Hard Work. Oh, why not put a power metal album on? on why the... not put Hard Work with Son of Perseverance? Well, yeah, why don't we combine Sound of Perseverance with Hard Work? Why don't we make that a triple? Wait, wait, wait. Wait, well, hold on. Wait, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Slaughter of the Soul. Why don't we turn that into a triple? Death, Carcass, and Entombed. Because we need Left Hand Path in the list. For sure. Yeah. 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 Why don't yeah, we combine those three okay. together? Yeah. So, Sonic uh, Perseverance with Hard and Work. And, and I thought, I I thought would, Hammer I Hard. Mind if, I thought Hammer Hard was number five. Well, it's, it's I wouldn't hard mind, work I wouldn't mind and... if to, to switch... I would not mind to switch Carcass, uh, Entombed and all to number 9. And number 10, we can put try to put a Power Metal album so we can make more... Alright, so... You want to move Psalm, Psalm 69 to what? Because mm. for sure, number 1 and 4 stay, Psalm 69 is number 5. We could put Hammer Heart number 5. And move everything down. They'll they'll leave a spot left. Wait, would it? No, that actually take a spot. No, no, wait. Never mind. It will leave a spot left. We we could put um a, a power metal band. And also, if you ask me, when it comes to industrial, if there has to be an industrial album, I would rather have Synth Sucked than Psalm sixty nine. Why not both? It- uh, we could go with both. <laughs> uh, that's already too many ties. Yeah, Wait, who cares? I'm trying. I'm who trying cares? to. I'm trying to like think about this though. Uh, Fuck. Yeah, I told you. That, yeah, everybody watching. I told you this would be tough. Mm-hmm. Um. Fuck. I'm trying to think here. I mean, Sengzuk with Psalm sixty nine is fine with me. With. I guess we might as well go ahead. We'll tie them fine. Yeah, things look to tie cool. them fine. Now, if Zing we're going to make go room, ahead. now, is there room to put Nightfall and Middle Earth in now? Or is it still occupied, the whole list? Uh, we, we got we got two spots at number nine. Uh, actually, number... no, Hammer Heart. I forgot Hammer Heart. Yeah, Hammer, Hammer Heart. Heart needs to be five. So... I'll change it right now. Yeah. And we got a spot left. So you want to put <coughs> Blind Guardian? Yeah, we. I can go with Blind Guardian. So that would be what, um, which, uh, which one would... A Nightfall on Middle Earth. Nightfall. nightfall. So let me just change it up here. Nightfall. All right, so we got the 10 right now. Now let's now let's move some of them now around. Now let's try and understand the order. I think the top five of Nightside, I've won, Rust in Peace Seasons 2, The Mysterious and Blaze 3, Painkiller 4, and Four. Hammerheart 5, I think that stays. All right, so Hammerheart goes to number five. Let me change it up. So six, I could live with that being Death Carcass and Entombed. Seven, would, would it? seven, Alice in Chains, Caius. Eight, mm-hmm. we could make that Ministry, Rammstein. Nine, yep. Dissection. Ten, Blind Guardian. All right, so number five was Hammerheart. Mm-hmm. One of the finest work people. One of the finest work here on the Horseman Podcast. <laughs> uh, people I know, if people watch this back, say, "Why do you have so many ties? You can only pick 10. Well, it's you step in our shoes, pal, and try and figure out yeah. this shit. Now we know how bad. Now we know how banger feels when they have to do their list, and how uh, that metal show felt when they did their top fives, and how. 
bashful all right, they so, were. <laughs> all right. So number one, an outside eclipse. Number two, Rust in Peace with Seasons in the Abyss. Number three, The Mysterious with Bliss and Lauren Sky. Number four, Painkiller. <gasps> number five, Hammer Heart. Number six, Son of Perseverance with Hard Work and Left Hand Path. And number seven, Dirt with Welcome to Sky Valley. Number eight, Storm of the Lights, Blaine. <laughs> number nine, Psalm 69 with Zeng Zukt. And number 10, Nightfall Middle Earth. I can go with that. I'm good with it. Is everyone good with it? Yes. Going once. Uh, go, going once. Going twice. Going twice. Take now forever hold your Sold. Place. Sold. Oh, man. Just to wait till we do the 80s. Good God. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so that was our final 10 list. Wowzers. Next next episode should be a lot easier. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Because next time we come back for episode 48, the top 10 worst albums of all time. Oh, God. Oh, oh boy. We're going to have <laughs> a lot gonna of be fun. The cr- who's going to be the cream of the crop? More like... <laughs> the cream more of like, the crap. Yeah, more like cream of the crap. The or cream the, of the crap. The <laughs> cream of the crap. Or the shit in go. the dump. But... Yeah, oh, God. that's gonna be something. But holy fuck, my my brain still is not <laughs> recovered from waking up this morning. Jesus Christ! Uh, but yeah, that was God. uh that was our top ten. So a uh, recap. Uh, correct me if I mess up. Number one, yeah. Emperor in the Night Side Eclipse. Number two, yes, Megadeth Rust in Peace slash Slayer Seasons yep. in the Abyss. Number yes. three, Mayhem, Dem Mysterious, Dom Satanas, Slash, Dark Throne, A Blaze in the Northern Sky. Number four, yes. Jesus Priest, Painkiller. Number five, mm-hmm. Bathory, Hammerheart. Number mm-hmm. six, Death, The Sound of Perseverance, Slash, Carcass, Heartwork, Slash, Entombed, Left Hand Path. Yes. Number seven, <laughs> Alice in Chains, Dirt, Slash, Caius, Welcome to Sky Valley. Yes. Number eight, Dissection, Storm of Delights, Bane. Number yes. nine, Rammstein, Sin Sucked, and... Ministry Psalm 69 and number 10 yes. Blind Guardian Nightfall on Middle Earth. Yes. Approved. Approved. <sighs> I am out of breath now. We should be like a, a stamp. <laughs> Approved. Boom. <laughs> so, um. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh man. But, oh, uh, regardless, um, before we go, I'm going to, for the Twitch part of the stream, we're going to raid somebody. We are going to raid a buddy of mine and Daniel DK's The Walking Dead Pan, who's streaming right now. And actually, in less than two hours, DK himself will be live. So <laughs> that's going to be fun. And I'll be wearing this shirt tonight, so there you go. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, updates. So the next few episodes, yeah, next time we're back, it's the worst albums of all time. Episode 49, we're going to be doing Slayer songs. Mm-hmm. Episode 50, Judas Priest songs. And then I believe number 51, that's going to be the top 10 album openings. Yes. After that, we got to figure it out. Like, I want to do top 10 saddest metal songs and, and of course, 80s. But I would love to try and get Sam Dunn on there. I'll have to talk to Mm -hmm. DK about, hey, do you think it's possible we could get Sam Dunn to come on the show for one episode only? I still want us to just follow the song, please. Oh, boy. (laughs) I still want to do uh, what, what album I want to do? Master of Puppets. I want to do. Damn it! But yeah. we're gonna do that eventually. Eventually, probably. yes. Eventually. I mean, first of all, we're gonna do the Satanist. That's yeah, the, the Satanist. Oh, yeah, which I am getting person. in the mail soon. And I have an idea. And this one might might have please albums. Rammstein's Mutter. Yes. Mm-hmm. Eventually. And we gotta do and a Bathory it, album at some point, but the question: which one? Blood, blood, fire, death. I'd lean I'm more towards. With it. I could go under the sign of the Black Mark or mm-hmm. Hammerheart, but I guess yeah. blood, fire, death would be a good middle ground. Yeah, yeah we'll but do blood, but, fire, yeah. Death. but yeah. we'll see. We're gonna do them anyways eventually. Yeah, yeah, we'll find places for everything. Um, yeah. But anyways, thank you all so much for watching. If you've been watching on Twitch, go as I'm getting ready to raid Walking Deadpan. He's a cool dude. Until we meet again, Lord's High and Ricky.
You're a jackass. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. Uh, oh, I'm gonna have so much fun with you and Scott and Walter and James Saturday and James. Fucking kid, you're on with you with. Hey, Dad, everybody, how's it going, buddy? <laughs>